Good morning and welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. You're getting a live view right now of the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock aboard the International Space Station. You can see the crew here getting ready to support the third spacewalk of the year, conducted by NASA astronaut Raj Atari and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. Chari and Maurer are suited up and getting ready to exit the station's Quest airlock for a six and a half hour spacewalk to replace hoses on the radiator beam valve module and make other upgrades to the station as well. We'll get into more detail about their space watching, walking tasks in just a minute. Chari is wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes. You can see him getting outfitted for his safer unit now. Uh, Maurer is on the unmarked spacesuit on the left of your screen. Again, we're in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock aboard the International Space Station now, and soon our spacewalkers will be moved into the crew lock just on the other side of the door behind them. We're going to be talking a lot today about the radiator beam valve module. Essentially, the space station has six radiators with two radiator beam valve modules each, so 12 total. The radiator beam valve module, or RBVM, as you might hear it, per, hear, per, hear, as you might have hear it referred to, is a box that allows ground control the ground to control the ammonia flowing through the radiators to cool the space station. They work similar to how your car radar, radiator cools the engine. One of the hoses that connects the radiator to the RVBM was found to be leaking about four years ago and was sent back to Earth for repair. It was flown back to the station and our spacewalkers will install it again today. So Chari and Mar are in their extravehicular mobility units, or EMUs. When out on the spacewalk, these suits provide life support and communications to the astronauts who wear them. The safer unit is what's being attached to the back of the spacesuit, and that's what Chari and Mar are getting outfitted with now. SAFER is an acronym that stands for Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. The SAFER units are a bit like a jetpack. They're worn during spacewalks as a precaution only. They're only used in the unlikely event that the astronauts were to become untethered from the space station. You'll hear all throughout the coverage um, our ground IV Stephanie Wilson today asking the crew to check on their tethers and make sure that all is good there. However, if they were to become untethered, the astronauts would use their safer units to propel themselves back to the space station.
Today's spacewalk comes just eight days after the space station's previous spacewalk. On March 15th, NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Rajachari donned their spacesuits and went outside to prepare the space station for future installation of rollout solar arrays. It was Chari's first spacewalk, clocking in at six hours and 54 minutes. Today, the honor of first spacewalk goes to Matthias Maurer. You may hear Maurer referred to as EV2 and Chari as EV1 by our ground IV Stephanie Wilson today. Chari is with the red striped suit on the right of your screen getting outfitted with his safer unit. Uh, Mara is to the left. NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron are wearing the blue shirts. You can see Car Kayla Barron helping out Raja Chari get a safer unit on, on screen now, center of your screen. Um, Tom Marshburn should be seen floating across your screen as well. Uh, Tom Marshburn is the suit IV. Kayla Barron is his assist today. That means that they helped Mara and Chari put their spacesuits on and conduct a leak check, which happened just a few moments ago, and other system checks before helping our spacewalkers through the hatch and into the crew lock. Once our spacewalkers step outside, Marshburn and Barron will continue to support today's operation at the controls of the station's robotic arm. Tom Marshburn is on screen now, assisting Kayla Barron with our space-suited astronaut, Raja Chari. Chari is now moving to the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. The crew began their day just after midnight central time today, but the crew has been preparing for today's spacewalk all week long. Chari, Marshburn, Barron, and Marr had conference with the spacewalk officers on the ground on Friday and Sunday to go over the procedures. On Monday, Chari and Marr had the opportunity to practice with some of the connectors that they'll be working with today and configured the tools that they'll be needing with them today. Yesterday, Chari and Mara prepped the equipment lock that Mara is in now, and all four met with the spacewalk officers via video conference one last time. Earlier today, before the, our spacewalking astronauts got outfitted into their spacesuits, they wore masks that allow them to breathe pure oxygen to purge nitrogen from their bodies. Earlier today, just before our coverage began, they completed another portion of their pre-breathe exercise known as in-suit light exercise, or aisle, this time in their spacesuits. This exercise involves moving their arms and legs. As part of the exercise, these movements help increase their metabolic rate and continue to help purge excess nitrogen from their blood. Doing so causes the spacewalking astronauts to avoid getting the bends, also known as decompression sickness. If you've ever gone scuba diving, you may be trained on how to avoid the bends while diving underwater as well, just like our astronauts when they go into the vacuum of space. 
That device you see on the left of your screen is the SAFER unit. Looks like European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr is getting outfitted with his now. You're getting a live view now of Mission Control. Uh, you may be familiar with the term CAPCOM or Capsule Communicator. This is the person in Mission Control who talks to the astronauts in space. But when there's an operation like a spacewalk, this job is actually split into two. In this case, the CAPCOM is communicating with the astronauts inside of the space station, while Stephanie Wilson, our ground IV, is communicating with our spacewalkers today. You'll likely hear her voice many times during today's coverage. Alex Konalakos is serving as Capcom for the rest of the crew. Paul Kanya is the flight director overseeing today's spacewalk. We'll be taking your questions during our coverage today, so if you have a question about what you're seeing, please head over to Twitter and submit your question using hashtag AskNASA, and we'll be monitoring throughout today's spacewalk. We're back in the Quest airlock of the International Space Station with NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn on the left in wearing the blue, Kayla Barron in the blue on the right, outfitting European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer into his safer unit and then moving him into the crew lock so that depressurization can begin. We expect this to happen in about less than 10 minutes. Our flight director, Paul Kanya, just issued a go-no-go no go poll for depressurization. He'll be pulling the room here in mission control, as well as our spacewalk officers and all supporting today to make sure that we are go for de depressurization. That poll will begin momentarily.
Matthias Maher in this spacesuit, uh, front and center with no stripes on it, unmarked, is making his way into the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. This is the next step until we go for depressurization. The pounds per square inch or PSI that we experience here on the ground is about 14.7. At normal operating pressure, the spacesuits are pressurized to about 4.3 PSI. That's about what you'd experience if you were standing at an elevation of 30,000 feet. When the astronauts go into the crew lock, we'll be able to give updates as the pressure steadily goes down, and then we expect them to pause for a leak check at about 5 PSI. Dylan?
radiator valve beam module. These hoses route ammonia through the station's heat rejecting radiators to keep systems at the proper temperature. Back in 2017, NASA found that ammonia was leaking and that the jumpers were the likely culprit. So in March of 2018, almost four years ago today, astronauts Drew Foistel and Ricky Arnolds conducted a spacewalk to remove them. The hoses have since made their way back to Earth for refurbishment and are ready to be installed once again by Mara and Chari. The duo will also complete a variety of other tasks, including installing uh, power and data, data cables to the Bartol Bartolomeo science platform and replace a high definition camera mounted on the outside of the space station. Sandy Fletcher is our lead spacewalk officer in mission control today. In this animation, she'll tell you about today's events in more detail.
position of the Quest airlock on the American side of the space station. Who you see on screen is Kayla Barron in the back of the equipment lock and Tom Marshburn. There are suit, IV, or suit IVs today. On the other side of the hatch there, astronauts Rajachari and Matias Mar are inside the crew lock. At 6.57, our flight director gave the go for depressurization, and the pressure inside the crew lock is steadily going down. It's at, hovering at about 9 PSI right now and decreasing. At 5 PSI, we will expect a momentary hold just to make sure there are no leak checks. Maurer and Chari do have their microphones on, so you may be able to hear the crew in the crew lock on the other side of the wall there communicating with Tom Marshburn and Caleb Barron, who you see on screen now. Copy good medox numbers. The crew lock is now approaching almost 6.5 PSI. If you're just joining us this morning, you're watching the third spacewalk of 2022, where NASA astronaut Roger Tari and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr have suited up and are getting ready to exit the International Space Station. They're expected to spend about six and a half hours completing some maintenance tasks on the station's exterior, and their main objective is to replace hoses on one of the station's radiator beam valve modules. The crew lock is now inside 6 PSI.
Once the crew log reaches about 5 PSI, the ground, here, the ground crew here in Mission Control will verify that there are no leaks in either of the spacesuits. And if all goes well, as expected, depressurization can go down to can continue to go down to volume. Um, they'll do one more check and receive a go to turn their spacesuits on to internal battery power, which marks the official start time of the spacewalk. But before we, that can happen, we're depressurizing, depressurizing the crew lock, which is now at about 5.5 PSI. Astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn are on your screen now. These are not our spacewalking astronauts, but our suit IVs. They're monitoring the depressurization as well. Matthias, take the deep press pump man isolate valve to close. And the deep press pump manual isolation valve is closed. Roger that. EV1 and EV2, switch your display switch to status until leak check question mark is displayed. And then take display to yes for two seconds, so long yes, and then follow displayed instructions for a leak check. EV2 copies. You just heard the voice of Kayla Barron indicating that we are at 5 PSI and are doing a leak check. You heard the callouts for EV1 and EV2. You might hear that referred to a couple of times through our coverage today. EV1 is NASA, NASA astronaut Raj Atari. trouble hearing you. Wanted to make sure you're configuring for an automated leak check. Yep, EV1 in the leak check and just watching the countdown. Do that. And that was the voice of Raj Atari you just heard, EV1. EV2 is European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr. Um, EV1 leak check complete. See, leak check complete, EV-1. EV-2, leak check complete. See, leak check complete, EV-2. For both of you, check your O2 actuator is in EVA. And EV-1 at work. Same for EV-2. EV-1, O2 actuator is an EVA. And the EV-1, O2 actuator is an EVA. EV-2, EV, uh, actuator, O2 actuator is an EVA. EV-2, your O2 actuator is an EVA. Copy that. Matias, take the depressed pump man ISO valve to open. And the depressed pump manual isolation valve is in open. The depressed pump man ISO valve is open. EV1 and 2, monitor your suit pressure gauge is less than 5.5. If it ever is greater than 5.5, we will stop the depress. Copy on, EV1 copy. And the checks were good, and we are proceeding to get the PSI down to vacuum. Yeah. 
We're now inside four PSI, inside the crew lock. Matthias, wait for my go, but on my go, uh, when we get to 2.0 pounds, we'll be taking the depressed pump man ISO valve to close. Copy. The PSI of the airlock is now within 3 PSI. The PSI is approaching 2 PSI in the crew lock. Uh, Kayla Barron had communicated with our EV2, Matthias Marr, uh, just a moment ago that there are some steps that he needs to complete when the crew lock reaches 2 PSI. Take the depressed pump man ISO valve to close. The depressed pump manual isolation valve is closed. Copy, depressed pump man ISO valve is closed. Switch the depressed pump power switch to off. Depressed power, the uh, depressed pump power switch is in off. The depressed pump power switch is off. Houston wanted to confirm you're ready to copy tether config. Yes, uh, EV2 is ready. Yep, we're ready. Houston is ready. Hello, start, Roger. Copy. Report initial tether configuration for egress. Okay, so EV2 start, and I start with my right weight tether. The uh, large hook is for my EV workstation, and small hook is on my right even extender. Gate closed, and the lock uh, hook is locked like on black. My left weight tether. Right, I got a pretty good view if you want me to pick up at some point, just let me know. My right right service is uh my left right service sorry, is like on the suit, the small hook, gates closed, black on black, and the large hook is on the D ring extender, so that's our load path of the airlock, and the gate is closed, black on black. I could 
continue with my safety tether. My safety tether attack is on my left foot steering extender. I have my red hook on my steering extender, the day close, black on black. I have the red reel, which is unlocked. On the red reel, I also have an AET, which I need later on on Columbus to fail it. Red reel anchor hook, the yellow hook, is connected to the green reel. The gate is closed, black on black. And the green hook from the green reel is on the red reel. <clears throat> My green reel anchor hook, which is labeled with a white um, tape and a chew on it, um, is Gate is closed, black, uh, black on black, connected to Raja's waist tether, and I have both in my hand, uh, also Raja's waist tether, gate closed, black on black, and I hand over to Raja to continue. The other end of that um, last waist tether that you have, I can see is on my left D ring extender, and that is gate closed, black, black on black. Also on my left D ring extender is a red and white crew hook, locked, closed, black, black on black. That runs to a single safety tether reel, which the large hook on my mini workstation with a white tape labeled EV1 single. My right side, on my mini workstation, I have a white hook, anchor hook labeled EV1 pack. That runs the green reel. The green reel has the green hook going to the red reel, and the yellow hook on the green reel. Both are unlocked. The yellow hook, anchor hook, is locked black on black. The green hook is unlocked. Coming out of the red reel, the crew hook is labeled red one, and that's on my right. D-ring extender locked. It closed black on black. Also coming from my right D-ring extender, I have a crew hook attached to a waist tether that's on my right mini workstation. And that is also gate closed, lock, lock, on black on that right D ring center. Hi, Roger. We may have missed it, but did you report your left waist tether small hook is on your D ring extender and locked? I did, yep. The left waist tether small hook is on the left D ring extender, gate closed, lock, lock, on black. And the other end of that, the crew hook, is what's attached to uh, ED2s. Okay, copy that, and could you both just confirm that your reels are unlocked? Yeah, for EV2, both reels unlocked. That EV1, correct. Uh, I have three reels all unlocked. Okay, roger that. I think from our perspective, that's a good tether config, but we'd like to confirm with ground ID. And Houston concurs, that's a good tether config. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. All right, gentlemen, we are now waiting for the crew lock to continue depress. When it is about zero, you'll expect another alert tone. And when we get less than 0.5 PSI, either per our telemetry in here on the PCS, on your DCM, or the EV hatch gauge, you can take the EV hatch to open. And remember, we need to pause after unlatching it before actually opening the hatch. Happy? I'm going to slide step this way. Now that we're moving towards that step just so I can get my hands onto the hatch handle. That position work for you? Yeah, Sorry absolutely. About it. Okay. Absolutely. You just heard a number of voices there, the first being EV2, Matthias Marr, and then similar words from EV1, Rajachari. They were just confirming their tether configuration, essentially making sure that they have, that everything that they need is in position where they need them to be, and nothing is tangled. They'll be tethered to the space station the whole time. <coughs> Suit IVs Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn are keeping a checklist of the configuration. Stephanie Wilson, our ground IV, confirmed a good configuration. Tree. We're at five zero millimeters of mercury, looking for 26. We'll keep okay. you updated. The crew lock is now within one PSI, getting down to zero.
see it. I think my right leg is hitting that bag, so just keep an eye on it when I go out. Make sure I don't pull anything out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you later. Just a moment ago, Ground IV Stephanie Wilson just issued her hellos to the crew this morning. If you're just joining us for the first time this morning, we have two NASA astronauts on screen, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron. They're actually assisting our spacewalkers. They are not the spacewalkers themselves. Our spacewalkers are through the door that you see on the far side of the screen there. There's a little window. You may see our spacewalkers, NASA astronaut Raj Achari and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. Uh, having their spacesuits sort of pop in through the window. You won't get a good look at them now. Depressurization is underway, basically going from space station pressure to the vacuum of space, what they might experience out there. The pressure in there is at about um, 0 0.75 PSI, getting down to zero. Uh, once this step is complete, all known as depressurization, they'll be able to exit the International Space Station and begin their spacewalk. Their objectives for today are replacing hoses on the radiator beam valve module, basically a system that assists the radiator, one of six radiators on the International Space Station, helps cooling. 36, looking for 26, 10 millimeters of mercury to go. Looks like about 0.6 on the airlock gauge. The next step in our procedures today is to receive the go from Mission Control here in Houston to open the outer thermal hatch cover. Um, followed by that, they'll be opening the inner hatch of the crew lock where the astronauts will emerge from. 31 for 26.
the pressure in the crew lock is now approaching 0.5 PSI, getting down to about zero. While our coverage today began about an hour ago, the official start time of the space dock of the spacewalk will not officially be clocked until the suits are turned on to internal battery power. We have point five on the hatch gauge. Okay, we're looking for a less than point five. We have about a half a millimeter to go on our telemetry. And we are below twenty six by PCS. You are go to open the EV hatch per the decal, remembering to pause after unlatching. Okay. Hold up. It's in unlatch, waiting a second. The hatch is open and the hatch keep is engaged. Roger that. The emergency MPEV is closed and I will turn you over to Killer. You're ground to V. Thank you. Look out there, guys. Thank you, Kayla. Let's get done. Kayla, Tom, thank you. Nice work. Roger and Matias on your DCMs. Take your power switches to bat, stagger your switch throws, and expect a warning tone. EV1. EV2 in that. Copy. Take your display switches to pro to verify functional display. Yep. Functional display. EV1 has a functional display. On the UIA, power EV1, EV2, two switches, take them to off, OFF. Copy. Power EV1 is power EV2, two off, OFF. Matthias, also check power EV1, EV2 LEDs, four of them are off, OFF. And I confirm four LEDs, OFF. On your DCMs, disconnect your SCUs from your DCM, install the DCM cover, and stow the SCU in the pouch. At 7.32 a.m. Central Time, 8.32 a.m. Eastern Time is the official start time of this spacewalk, marking the beginning of the 248th spacewalk in support of station assembly and maintenance. Chari and Mar are expected to spend about 6.5 hours replacing two hoses on the radiator beam valve module and a number of other maintenance tasks. At the beginning of the spacewalk just moments ago, when those spacesuits got turned on to internal battery power, the space station was flying over the South Pacific Ocean. Copy EV2. And EV1, EV that's the use disconnecting still. Copy EV1. On the crew lock, check deep press pump man ISO is closed. And I confirm the deepest pump man also is in close position. 
Thank you. On your DCMs, take your temperature control valve to max hot. Uh, EP1 is in max hot. EP2 in max hot. Take your water switches to on. EP2 water switch is on. EP1 water switch is on. We're in a brief but expected handover period. You're getting a live view of mission control in Houston. Check it blank and bytes is off. And also on EB2, check DCM cover closed. Our ground IV, Stephanie Wilson, is getting our spacewalkers through their final checks. Um, pretty soon we'll get a live view of them coming out the Quest airlock. No bite light and the DCM cover is closed. But see if your FCU pouch Came floating down by here by the hatch. You don't have to get it back. You can wait until I get out, but just so you know, it's over here. Grab it once I'm, you'll have more room once I'm out of the hatch. Okay. Yeah. So it's out of the pouch. Correct. There's a pouch drill. I've, I've got it in my hand. It, I'll just hold until I get out so you don't tangle yourself. Next is the temperature control valve. You can take that uh, as you like. Setting EV226. And EV1 set. Let's try it. It doesn't work right now. You're getting a live look now at one of the many external cameras aboard the International Space Station looking at the outside of the Quest airlock. EV1 is at 4.2. EV2 is at 12.2. Copy all EV1, EV2. You can take your visors as required. It's currently dark. It will be five minutes to the daylight transition. We have the suit parameters. And so we are ready for you to uh, start to work egress for opening the uh, hatch thermal cover. Well, uh, ready to copy, George. And I'm going to start to where I've got to go to go ahead and disconnect this, the strap and fill it. On the thermal cover. The uh, thermal cap strap is disconnected from the D-ring, attached to the stowage ring, and pulled taut. Copy, and you have six uh, Sharpie lines vis visible on the tail. Roger, I think you said you see six Sharpie lines. Confirm, six Sharpie lines. Copy that. We're ready for you to egress the air airlock when you're ready. That's good. Thermal cover's coming open. And just like that, you're seeing a live view of the hatch thermal cover swinging open. Ground IV Stephanie Wilson gave our spacewalkers today the go to egress.
once the spacewalkers are fully egressed or outside of the crew lock. The SCU pouch is trapped somewhere. Mine or yours? Yes, I have it. Once they've egressed, their next steps are to grab their tool bags, close the hatch thermal cover, and turn their HECAs on and perform a series of buddy checks. I'm out. I'm just getting my cutters sorted out here. I'll start laying down anchor hooks. Copy. Rajachari is the first one out the door today. You'll see that it's Rajachari as EV1, as he has the spacesuit with the red stripes. Roger, we have a camera on you, and we can see that you may have the uh, camera bag uh, egressing out with you. Just wanted to check uh, that's what you'd like, and a 30 seconds to a 20 second handover. That is definitely not my plan to have the camera bag with me. First, so we've got load pass, and then I'll come back to that bag. We're in an expected handover period between our TDRS, or tracking and data relay satellites that provide our video and audio communication, one of many communications methods from the ground, with the ground to the space station. Um, right now, astronaut Rajachari is fully egressed from the Quest airlock. Now we're waiting for EV-2, Matthias Maurer, to do the same. Roger, copy your plan to work the anchor hooks. Your anchor hook goes aft, and Matthias's anchor hook goes forward. That could work. Okay, and the white hook, anchor hook, labeled two, which is Matthias's anchor hook, is locked, lock on lock, on the forward there, lock you, right? With that, Matthias has a good low pass. We're here to disconnect your lace tether, Matthias, from the airlock to ring center. I'm going to start working on this bag here. Good night. I'm twist it. I'm taking off my left lace tether from the ceiling, extending off the airlock. And Roger, can you report the config of EV-1 safety tether? Yes. Uh, so EV-1, my EV-1 white anchor hook, marked EV-1 single, is on the aft D-ring. That's the last D-ring. Copy that. And we had a short handover. We may have uh, missed that. Thank you. Got it. Yep. So I can see the camera bag. I think the red is wrapped around something on my right side, so I'm trying to find where it's wrapped on. And Matthias, my safer tank drill is definitely deployed, so that flood was caught on. Oh, it's oh, yeah, it's popped out there. Oh. I see. That's what that rat was wrapped around. Okay. Can we fix it outside? Uh, why don't we try to get the bag? Can you get the bag inside? And then we can definitely work the safer handle outside. Yeah. But uh, don't, I'll just obviously be careful. I can't see what it's attached to back there. Uh, can you go on left? Oh, it's the uh, court exactly if you don't say that.
grab that with your hand and push it like towards your body forward left. Towards your body forward left, that might clear some safer handle. Otherwise I need to come out. I'm close to you. so that I can reach your safe handle. This is further toward the feet. I think I come outside. Okay, let me move from the opposite of the handle here so you got room. Trying the same chick like you. Oh, there's something caught on me. Okay, coming out. The space station has moved into an orbital daytime approaching the southern tip of South America, and we see European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer's feet poking out of the Quest airlock there. The spacewalker in our suit with the red stripes, Roger Tari, ingressed moments ago. between your BRT, if you can push that up in front of you, that should make it for you. The place is hitting the back of the uh, hatch, so if you straighten your legs out. Roger, Matthias, uh, we concur with that. We like um, having you egress, get untangled. We'll actually work with the safer handle first, and then uh, we'll do the bag ups. Okay. I don't know if we can get the handle back in with that bag wrapped wrap around it, though. But right now, it's, I can feel tension. Yeah. Um, and I'm clearing that one at the moment, sir. Okay. And Matthias Maurer, our EV2 for the day, is fully egressed from the Quest airlock. For me to say that the untangling includes the current bag that you're working on now. Okay, copy. Okay, so that dog goes back in. Nice we done, Matthias. All right. All right. All right, bags out of the way. No. You're safe now. If you need to pause to get your visor down, you can. Go get blinded or you're good. I'm good at the okay. moment. All right. So now, do you need to come close to me? Yep. Well, the strategy is rotate all this stuff out of the way, so I don't interfere with you. And I think I can stabilize my body. That would be my feet facing this way, and then turn my safer handle just towards you. All right. Well, we're getting the heck of a translation adaptation time here. <laughs> so do I need to go around? Oh, no, I need to no, no, no. Into, into that hole, honestly. Yeah, if you remember that, it's got the two positions on the, uh, the pin when you put it back in, so you get a part of the way in, and then you have to seat it the rest of the way. Yeah. And, uh, Roger, Matthias, we have steps for this uh, safer deploy with the hand controller module. Since you have your hands on it, is it a good time for us to give you that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, put camera on me. Yes. I think I need to switch to my anchor. Uh, we have a big picture external view of both of you. 
Okay. There's the it's on or off now? It's on. Good, so I'm ready for the steps. Copy, there's a caution. Be careful not to accidentally bump the power switch. And I believe this one is already taken Copy. care of for Roger. You have, he has a local tether down. Manual ISO valve on the handle. Two. Take it port to the left, to the closed or up position. On the left, that's for Roger. Checking, hold on. Our spacewalker is now working through a number of post-egress tasks. Roger, we need it to be up. Oh, sorry, okay. Okay, it's up now. And then on the hand controller module, we'd like you to check this configuration, that the power switch is off, OFF. Power switch is in OFF, and the other switches are in trance and in neutral. And the mode switch needs to be in rotational and the display blank. Copy. And I'll adjust the both. Rotation and display in blank. Copy. Now you can insert the hand control module onto the tray, routing the uh, umbilical, as you remember from training, that routing goes counterclockwise under the hand controller module grip. Just tell me where you need me to move. Oh, stay, stay exactly okay. as you are. Tried to close it, and I remember there was a trick that you, you try to close it part way, and then you have to get it the rest of the way down. Once that pin, once the uh, clevis is halfway engaged with the pin. And we concur. Nicely done. All that translation adaptation complete. <laughs> yeah, I need to always myself where I am now. <laughs> nice work, gentlemen. Nice work, gentlemen. All right. I, I think you need to take that left safer handle back to down to rearm the system, correct? That's a firm. That should work. And then we can get, uh, we'll get the firm, we'll get your bag, and buddy checks here in a second to get all this squared away. So do you want me to climb back in to retrieve the bag? Oh, the RBBM bag? Oh, sorry, yeah, I forgot. Yep, yeah, we get to do that. To make sure we're not tangled in here all the way up here. We're hanging around each other. Okay, I start moving up. One uh, follow-up from your work with the hand controller module, we would just like to confirm that the manual isolation valve, that handle on the port left side, is down. It is down, yep. Copy, thank I you. Put it back down. Yep. 
our spacewalker is now doing some closeout tasks at the airlock before they head on their way. They're making sure that nothing is tangled and that they have the equipment that they need, that their HECAs are on. You may have heard Chem chatter about them turning on their HECAs. This stands for High Definition Extravehicular Activity Mobility Unit Camera Assembly. In other words, they're high definition cameras that allow us to see from the astronaut's point of view. Speaking of cameras, one of the tasks that they have today is exchanging a camera on the external side of the International Space Station. Looks like Rajatari inadvertently had taken out that bag, but it will not be used right in the beginning of our spacewalk, but will be retrieved later in the spacewalk for use. Okay, next is my bag. The top of P4 <coughs> bundle, which is now attached for my PRT latch hook. And I retrieve the small hook, the small hook on the D-ring extender. Copy the bag configuration. Roger, you can turn your HECA on. And Matthias, you can also stow the airlock waist tether uh, large hook to the airlock D-ring extender or as you desire. Yes, it is. And for EV1, my HECA is on. Copy, Roger. Good light. We're in a brief handover period, and we hope to get our live views of the of the outside of the International Space Station back soon, where our spacewalkers are getting ready to go on their way. In between the two safety tether reels, I'll just I'll watch it as you come down here. Our spacewalkers will actually be working pretty independently from one another for the majority of the spacewalk. NASA astronaut Roger Tari will be on the robotic arm for almost the entire spacewalk, while EV2, Matthias Marr, completes different tasks throughout the station's exterior, basically taking a tour of the outside of the space station going all around the different modules. Okay, right now I've got it tapped on with uh, Velcro. I'll have to get that more secure in a second. If you want to get your bag so that's not going to drift off. And then I think, well, let's get your bag sorted out, and I'll have you probably lay with your head towards the airlock and towards me, and I can see if I can re attach it. I'm going to hold your bag. I go very slowly towards me because it's just held on to my velcro right now. Uh, I'm going to try to get in the body, better body position here. That'll work on that. I need to rehook that one. As long as it's not tangled or is it stuck through something. 
It is uh, with my safety tether, like there's a wraparound. I think it's your waist tether, actually. Yeah. So for now, if it's true, let's not worry, but let's get the helmet on. Wait, 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 wait. just a second. Let me clear the hour in hand. Okay. Alright, let's get the whole thing away. Slow down, slow down, slow down, very slowly. Um, um, or come here. Come slowly towards B, so you're looking up into the hatch. Alright. Now we're back with a live look of one of the many external cameras on the exterior of the International Space Station, looking at the outside of the Quest airlock. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is find the body position that you can hold. I'm going to see if first I can try to re-engage them. All right, holding. I'm about to move around a bit here. And Roger, Matias, there is also a crib sheet for this uh, operation. Okay. Yep, I'm happy to. Happy to listen. Yep, and um, you guys are doing you you're doing the right thing, minimizing motion and uh, making Matthias as uh, stable as and rigid as he can be. For I believe one Velcro strap has come loose. Yep. So you're going to try to the right is loose. The right is loose. You're going to try to reroute that strap between the hut plus interface. Attaching the Velcro strap to the hut TMG side first. Are you stable enough, Matias, that I can yeah. actually crawl on your back? Yeah, you, 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 I am. I am okay. stable. I'm holding on to you. Go for it. <clears throat> okay, the right Velcro is re-engaged. So both Velcro straps are on. Now I need to see if we can try to engage, or actually, I'll stop the over to you for the next step, but I assume I'm going to try to re-engage the actual locks on the helmet. for the wire tie solution. <laughs> Checking. Checking. Okay, left and right Velcro is engaged. I'm going to translate on you again to see if, to see if I can find the box. I mess with this anymore. I'm also thinking maybe I should find something to rent to on those helmets. So if it does come off, so I'm trying to reattach it. It doesn't. They don't lose it. And Roger, Matias, we're continuing to talk about it. Also, we like how you've routed the strap. What we propose is that you close the thermal cover, continue with buddy checks while we discuss uh, any further work on the on the helmet camera. Put the maggots holding it closed. Yep, closed. Our astronauts are now working to close the hatch thermal cover. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'll start on you. I can see. Coming up soon, they'll perform a series of buddy checks, checking out each other's spacesuits, and making sure all is well. One, two. If you yaw body left, I can see your other tab. One, two, three tabs up, and both your safer handles are down. Okay. At least that is good news. And your crew lock bag is behind you, down by your left side, so it looks like it's a good config. I see your tether pack running up to the forward black key ring. Your tether pack is here. Okay, don't close. Black on black. 
But um, okay. uh, right now your uh, your waist tether runs up through your tether back, but as soon as you disconnect that, you get. Okay. Yeah. Once you get that down, we'll, I can work on your other waist tether. Now, your other waist tether, like you mentioned before, is wrapped around the knuckle of your BRT. So if you take your left waist tether anchor hook off your mini workstation. You're getting a view now of the tethers that our spacewalkers, Rajatari and Matthias Maurer, are discussing. Yep, that one. And then run it under your BRT and back to you. There you go. Now you're good. All right. All right. You're looking ready for a space walk other than helmet lights. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for check? Call him. Tell me where you need me to move. I see uh, the green helmet light. Great view of NASA astronaut Raja Chari now, who you see in the red stripes with the Earth below. Chari is assisting Matthias Maher to make sure that his tethers are configured correctly. It's nicely on your left, and I think you can easily manage it. Um, in your safety tether, I see that your EB-1 crew hook is safely attached to the aft uh, E-ring on the airlock. It's real 23, it's unlocked, and I see that, can you show me your small hook? It's locked. Yeah, it's locked, so, and it's in your steering extender. And your other safety tethers are routed on the right and clear. Thank you. There is one small red which is on your PGT which is locked out. You might unlock it so that uh, you don't smack it. Thank you. All right. Take that body check complete. I have a for a baseline half check. It is dry. My gloves. Uh, do not have any new sludges on them from when we started. And the same for EV2, my hat is dry and my gloves look pristine, like uh, from when we started. Alright, and stand by for the helmet. I would minimize your movement for now, Matthias, because your clothes are just held on by Velcro. Roger, Matthias, copy all, and uh, we are ready. good buddy checks and copy your HAP and baseline gloves. We're still uh, discussing the HECA. Copy. I'm trying to see what might be a good position for me to work on this. I'm thinking stay on the handrail here. I get behind you in between the wagon wheel. Back here, I might be able to get yeah. some myself in there enough to work on it. It's catch at your part, they came off. That was good. Uh, I'm this way a little bit more and I'll see if I can see the latch mechanism back there. Kill, I'll defer to you. Obviously, you guys have the crypt sheet. One idea is I can rent to this cable that I'm pointing at with my left hand and then try to work it back out of latches. And that way, if I miss, at least I get a rent to it. But we'll stand by for your words. 
and Roger Matias, uh, we're still talking about it, but what we're thinking is using a wire tie to keep uh, Matias's, uh, to better secure Matias' uh, helmet camera. But we're still discussing. Stand by, please. Okay. All right. Roger. You just heard ground IV Stephanie Wilson relay to the crew that they're working on a fix um, for Matias's and also helmet also camera. Your assessment, do you think using a wire tie is uh, something that you can perform? I, I can't, but what, what am I wire tying it to? Like the visor knob or something like that? So I can look for something I would attach it to. And uh, we have some initial thoughts, but uh, let me uh, let me get the uh, final plan. Okay. Just got my BRT here while we have some time. Do you want me? Oh, no, it's not. It's all. I was just putting it higher up on my body so I can get to it later. Oh. Roger, Matias, we're still uh, discussing. We do have some uh, steps that we're pulling together. We appreciate your patience. You can uh, hang out for a bit and uh, perhaps uh, get some good photography. Sounds good. There. What the crew is working through now is a camera and helmet light assembly that just doesn't want to stay secured into place. The ground right now is working a solution, possibly using some wire ties, but still talking amongst themselves on a solution. Basically, they just don't want to interfere with the spacesuits or the ability for the spacewalkers' uh, life support units to get in the way or anything to be compromised there. But as soon as we have a fix, our spacewalkers will be on their way to the work site.
you're getting a live view of the Quest airlock with two spacewalkers, Rajachari in the spacesuit with the uh, red stripes. You can see his legs poking out there. And European Space Agency Ma astronaut Matthias Maher. Uh, they began their spacewalk and are getting ready to go out to their work site. But first, the crew here on the ground is working on a solution to Matthias Maher's uh, camera and helmet light assembly, kind of keeping it in place before they head off. Brazil, below. Yes, I think so. Could be. Roger, Matias, just uh, checking in. We're still uh, working it. The plan is coming together. I should be back with you shortly.
a solution to the loose camera and helmet light assembly. Uh, part of the helmet section of the spacesuit, uh, for Matthias Maurer, is in work with the ground crew here. Um, our next step is to hear from our ground IV, basically the Capcom of a spacewalk. Uh, NASA astronaut Stephanie Wilson is expected to give some words to the crew once they're ready. Roger, Matias, the plan has come together. Thank you for your patience. So what I'd like to do is uh, kind of read the steps as a big picture, get your comments and assessment, and then we can step through it. And the plan includes uh, using two long wire ties, Roger, from your BRT. So you're going to use those wire ties to secure to the safer towers. You'd wrap one end of the wire tie around the right EHIP gimbal while Matias attempts to hold the EMU-TV EHIP assembly onto his helmet. The tie down should, not, should minimize impingement into the thruster areas, and the preference is to route around the vertical safer tower to minimize the possibility of the wire tie sliding toward the thrusters. Then you'll wrap the open end of the wire tie around the safer, around the safer tower. Read that back with Earth. So I think you said I'm going basically taking a long wire tie and going around the gimbal and then down to the safer tower. And what I didn't uh, explain the thing you're talking about the vertical part of the tower. Right. And the safer tower, it's kind of at the it's an upside down L. So you'll be wrapping the other end of the wire tie around the uh, horizontal portion and keeping it clear of any thrusters. Okay, I think I did that. So almost following the same routing as the Velcro, essentially. Yeah, that's correct. I would just concur. Yeah. Okay. All right, I will start putting that in work. I'll work on his right side first, and why don't you find whatever a stable position is for you that uh -huh. I can kind of push you around and you won't move. Yeah, uh, I have a stable position. Okay. But I'll try to make it myself. Um, so I'm going to kind of use you to translate on them or to, to brace myself as I'm doing this. Yeah. Ground IV Stephanie Wilson just communicated the plan that our EVA team here on the ground came up with. Essentially, astronaut Raj Achari is going to use one of the wire ties on his body restraint tether, one of the tethers keeping him to the International Space Station. It was decided that these wire ties will not be used throughout the space station, so they're available to use on Matthias Maurer's camera and helmet assemb light assembly. He'll be attaching it to part of the safer unit, making sure to be careful of not interfering with the safer unit's ability to safely get Matthias Maurer back to the space station in the event of an emergency. You're getting a live view of Mission Control in Houston, now the International Space Station's flight control room, where flight controllers are talking amongst themselves on a solution to the camera and helmet light assembly. They've gotten instructions for NASA astronaut Rajatari on how to secure that into place, and are just making sure that the path is correct and agreed upon by everyone in the room.
once this solution has been worked. I think where you're talking about, I've got three twists in. What I'm going to try to do is use the rent hook, put more twists into it to essentially tighten this down more. When a solution has been worked, NASA astronaut Roger Chari will work to configure the robotic arm and ride it out to the radiator beam valve module while Matthias Maher routes an Ethernet cable. Well, I guess one caution with this, Matthias, is you probably won't be able to, like, manipulate the aiming of your lights. You'll just have to be careful when you're up there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If you could aim it, I think, if you could aim it already now. Yeah, okay. hold, hold on. Sorry, I'm pulling you around here. Yeah, and we're all done with this. We'll have to check our safety tethers again because I'm hanging all over your <laughs> back here trying to bond you. Let's see what so, let, me, let, me try to get, let me get a camera view on that so they can see it. Yeah. Do you have KU back, Stephanie? Roger, we do not, and we're also uh, about two minutes from a from a teacher's S band handover. Okay. I'm I would kind of like you to see this before I do the other side, and just so I'm not wasting time. If not what you're imagining. I'll hold here then until you get a view. Copy that. We'll let you know. Your your helmet lights, Matthias, on that right side look like they're in line and like properly positioned. But you, the yeah. left side I'll have to change a little bit, but I think the right side looks good. Yeah. What you could do is like you could flatten these uh the wire tie so that it's like less of an obstacle when I move around. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, let me try to tuck it in on top of the stage. And Roger Matias, also for your essay, we're about 11 minutes uh, tonight. I think that body position worked pretty well. So what I'm thinking is maybe I could I could just go to the side and that right. go to the forward side for the next one. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can, I, I could also just go around. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That might work. Yep. Trying to think. But you want me to I, I don't have the handrail on this side, it doesn't go all the way around, but we try let's try we'll try it. Let's like get the camera view and have you yaw see if that works, so that'd be the easiest thing. But hold on so they get yeah. to see this view. Okay. Well, if we had great tape out here, I could really, <laughs> I could really fix it. Yeah, I'll cover, you cover your helmet with great tape. We're waiting for our live views of the International Space Station to come back as we hand off between satellites. Uh, once we get our live view back, the folks here in Mission Control will evaluate Rajachari's work securing the lights and camera assembly. And it looks like we're getting our live views back now. Roger, Matias, we're uh, back with you on KU. Okay, let me get uh, positioned here. All right. 
exactly sure what you see in the HECA, but hopefully you can see that. Assessing. Roger, nice work. Um, we like what we see uh, on that side. So if you can repeat it on the other side, that'd be great. Good try. If you're able before you swing all the way around, uh, yep, you're actually fine. I'm going to work on getting the rat while you swing, so take your time. No rush. Just be aware you're, you're with their visuals back, it looks like the ground here just confirmed with NASA astronaut Raj Uttari that the camera and helmet light assembly on Matias Maurer's spacesuit uh, looks good to them. Uh, we're now one hour into the spacewalk. Since the crew has spent considerable time working on Matthias Maurer's camera and helmet light attached to his helmet there, uh, the crew here on the ground is now discussing what procedures we'll be able to get to today. Of course, the priority of today's tasks is the radiator beam valve module. It was not expected to take the whole spacewalk, um, so now they're discussing what other maintenance tasks that were planned we'll still have time for. All right, once more, I'm going to use you as a translation aid here. Get a little closer this time. Great lap strap, lap strap practice. <laughs> yes. All right. Did you log into your Mindy workstation? Uh, no, you're fine. Okay. Okay. On you again. You are. And then I can get around the safer gesture tower. Oh, dang, I need to make you go. Uh, actually, this guy, yeah, if you can hold me in this position, that, or, what, that body position. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm going to move a little closer to you now. 
got it routed. I'm just trying to get the wire tie. And, uh, tip you around here. Hold on, let me lock out this red so I can get it. So to recap today's events, our spacewalkers today switched their suits to internal battery power at 7.32 a.m. Central Time. When they exited the hatch, uh, Matthias Marr had trouble keeping his helmet camera and light firmly attached to the spacesuit. Uh, the spacewalk team here on the ground came up with a solution for Raj Achari to use one of his wire ties um, on the, uh, the tethers of his spacesuit to secure it into place. So even though the Matthias is experiencing a problem with his spacesuit, uh, the crew is in good health. This has nothing to do with our astronaut. They're both completely fine. Uh, we just need to secure the helmet into place as well as the light. And I had it, but slipped off, so I'll put it again back to the back of the thruster tower. Every position here. Just stay where you're at. If you want to let go of my MWS and stabilize yourself. All right, go ahead. Go. Yeah, let go of my MWS and stabilize your body. I'm going to try to use again. I think this is work better. Okay, there's three twists. Now I'm going to start tightening it with the ret. Please stay where you are. Can you grab the label on your body again, please? All right.
Okay. Uh, see the routing for that one. I don't know if you're happy with that. Roger, nice work. We are happy with that routing. And big picture, uh, now that we have uh, completed that work, we're going to uh, reset as you could think of it. I'll get a glove and half check from you. We'll start the uh, initial test tasks for this EVA as we have planned and as are written, and we'll assess as we go the uh, tasks at the end. I uh, heard your reference earlier to gray tape. I like that. Uh, that does fix all, as does teamwork. You guys did a nice job working together and working through this, and uh, we're here with you, and uh, we will get the, get the task accomplished for this EVA. Nice work. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you. Let's uh, clean up our tethers and stuff, as I know we crossed a few times there, Matthias, trying to translate on one another. So take your time, and then we'll get body checks once we are happy with our tape. And we're now able to see the helmet camera views of both of our spacewalking astronauts today. Rajachari on the left, who's our EV-1, and Matthias Marr on the right as EV-2. Okay, I verified my anchor hook. They close black or black. I see and both of them. My yellow hook is attached to the green wheel, box they close black on black. And the anchor hook on my suit is also they close black on black. Now that Matthias Maurer has his camera and helmet light fully secured and is not interfering with his safer unit in any way, uh, they're going to go on as if they just got out the door. Uh, we are about a minute, an hour and 12 minutes into our spacewalk here today, uh, just beginning our tasks now. They're going to do buddy checks right now and tether checks now. I can see your bundle on the left side. Looks pretty secure and back out of your way. After their buddy checks conclude, uh, they'll make their way to their first work site. And once that moves, you'll be good on tethers. In terms of mine, I see my anchor hook marked EV1 single on the AFT 50 ring, and it's locked around that direction. Get from there, still locked. Okay, now there it is. Gate closed, locked, lock on lock. The rule is unlocked, going to my left T ring. Extender, it is gate closed. Black on black, and it's the red and white bubble pole number one. And my right face tether pack is attached to the main workstation on the right gear extender. That's the drop in later. And if you can check my wall yeah, there, right there, and I see Sim, I see I swung around quite a bit when I was crawling on you, I think. Yeah, we try to reconfigure that before we start translating. One latch of the door open. Goes. You're getting a good view now of NASA astronaut Raj Achari. You can tell because he's got the red stripes on his legs. Um, in just a moment, you should be able to see two bright lights shining out from his helmet. Those are the those are the lights that we're, we were fixing on the camera of Matthias Maurer's helmet, who's, you're looking at his point of view now. All right, so let me have a body check on you. I see echo light on, WVS light is on. I see like four, camera, four lights on. Satellite. The mini workstation tapped on to the well, to be a T1 hour lap. That's good. Straight handles are both down. If you see all this to my side, yes, they're both down. Um, in the safety tether configuration, you reported, so you look in the good shape for me. All right. I think with that, uh, Killer, if you're ready, we'll have Matthias start heading up the uh, Petersburg. Nice work, good checks. Uh, we are ready for Matthias to start his translation up the sea to start. That's good. And let me know once you're up top and headed port. Yeah, all right, take it slowly. Yep, absolutely. Sounds great. And uh, when you get to phase one, there's a caution, avoid contact with deployed test cable. My old friend. Old buddy, old friend. Got 
Five four beacons here. You try to pass the skip down between your legs, go a bit, and I'm on the seat the right. And walking towards. Let's see you go apart and wait for your tether to pull a little tighter, then I'll start heading up. Yeah. The first stop for our spacewalkers is the Crew Equipment Translation Aid Cart, or CETA cart, uh, where Matthias Maurer is going to be headed. The CETA cart is an aid to the spacewalkers and a spot where the spacewalkers can attach equipment when they need to stow something. Uh, Mar will stow his tool bag to the CETA cart, while Rajachari follows the same path shortly after and retrieves a portable foot restraint from the same CETA cart. Uh, this portable foot restraint attaches to the station's robotic arm, so the arm can move Chari to various work sites today. I'm on the seat of Spur. Copy, Roger. And it turns a little sideways here, so I keep an eye on the seat of Cutter as I come up. Our spacewalkers have now left the airlock and are making their way to the seat of cart. Uh, the mobile transporter. Copy, Matthias. Coming up on the port seat of cart. That's where I need to tap so my luggage. That's correct. You'll stow the bag bundle with uh, the external adjustable and the crew lock bag adjustable. Work. The drop. No, Chris. Okay, I'm at the top of the seat. I see your tether down below me, and I see my tether on top of yours. And you're getting a view of the seat of cart now. That's good. Roger. Kayla and Tom are with you. No rush, but when you're ready, we are go for your safety tether swap and APFR install and ingress. You just heard the voice of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. You saw him earlier in our coverage helping our spacewalkers into their spacesuits today. Now he and Kayla Barron have moved to the robotic arm operations area. They'll be taking turns flying Rajatari on the robotic arm today. And then when you're happy with the bag stowage, you'll retrieve the wire tie caddy from the P4 crew lock bag and stow it on your mini workstation. I will drop down. I 
Tapos bag is on hotel, and the P4 bag is on golf, and uh, I'll be retrieve the wire tie, cabin. Copy, Matthias. And copy, Roger. We see you en route to the FHRC to attempt stow the RBVM crew lock bag. I'm trying to keep Matthias's tally on 70. When I get on the other side here, Matthias, before you go later, I may have you check just to make sure I haven't entangled your tether. Yes, sir. I will be moving out in a second. So there's both bags on my BRT. Checking them off. I verify both are safely secured. Take off the BRT red. I'm at the MT. Tally your tether and tally the test cable. Your tether is on the snag on my lock bag. To your left, let's but do not rush. Um, yeah, plenty of time. I've got my eyes on your tether now, so we're deconflicted. Taking off my locus, and I will be moving Venus from here. Support and then Venus. Matthias, next is your uh, green hook, stowing that on handrail 3651. Matthias has 3651. Hold on, Matthias, hold on, hold on. Don't come down yet. Your tether is wrapped up on me. You get a local pickup and I'll push your tether below it and then move again. If it's being trapped right now, hold on a second. Matthias, here you are, hold on. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me if I'm you're clear, clear of yours? You're clear, yes, you're clear. Okay. Stay high. Got it, yep, I'm coming up under the MT to the port seat of cart now, so I'll stay high. I would stay low. I'll enjoy my low first. Two green hook on 3651. I check the reeds are both unlocked. Copy, Matthias. And as far as I can see, my safety data is clear, but it's below your best foot driver. Okay? All clear it up? It's clear, it's clear. Huh? Maybe I should move it to the lower center. Okay. 
No idea. Matthias, when Raj is ready for you to move, next will be your translation on the P1 Nader handrail path towards the CP8 rail bag. Andrew, you're clear to keep moving, Matthias. I'm above you now, and I think our cutters are clear. I can see mine. I can't see yours, but I think that's because it's gone Nader with you. Is this just for me, Nader? I'll sort Nader. Sort Nader. And Matthias, there are two cautions uh, as you translate uh, that way. Do not translate on the radiator beam and avoid cyclic loading and avoid kicking the radiator beam. If any contact, wait two to five minutes to allow for structural response to dissipate. About the FHRC, Stephanie, on the work on the story in the RBBM bag. Copy that. Chari just confirmed that he has the tools that he'll need for the radiator beam valve module uh, work site. Uh, first, he's got to get his portable foot restraint installed to the robotic arm, where then he'll he'll then mount the arm and be moved to the work site. Meanwhile, Matthias Marr, um, leaving the CETA cart, he'll grab some wire ties from one of the bags and go retrieve a reel of cables that is on the outside of the International Space Station. He'll use these supplies and start routing an Ethernet cable on his way to the camera port 8 work site. He'll follow a path of handrails to help him guide the cables. Later in the spacewalk, they'll work to replace a camera, routing this Ethernet cable ahead of time. We'll save some time later on. And then stow the wild tag caddy in the pouch of the reel bag. Work. You're getting a view now of the station's robotic arm that Raj Uttari will have his feet connected to later on. Killer, the uh, RBVM bag is tethered via AET to the FHRC and rail. I'm going to start working on getting my safety tether pack onto the uh, SS service lead point. Copy that. Nice work, Roger. In killer EV1, I've got my EV1 pack, white hook, locked, good clothes, black on black, 
on the the color point. Copy that. Thank you for my right waist right uh waist D ray sender red hook two hook and then it's gate closed lock lock on lock. Going back to do the tether swap and pick up the ATFR. Copy that, that's a good plan. You just heard Rajachari uh, speaking with the ground, talking about configuring his tethers to prepare him to get onto the station's robotic arm when he's ready. You're getting a live view now of Matthias Maurer. He's routing an ethernet cable that will support a camera once they install it later on in the spacewalk. Matthias is at 36.36 and attaching the first wire card. We copy Matthias and we have a great 36, view. 36. Actually, 36.37. You want me to go to the 36.30? 36, 30. And we go to 36.36, 36, which is close to the radiator, or the 36.37. I believe it's the 36, yeah? You want to be to the off side, I understand. So I correct. And Matthias, there's a couple of cable routes. You should be on the Nader aft okay. side. So we're expecting the series 3636 yeah. and 3670. Copy all, and I just corrected on a 3636. Copy that. Thank you. Our ground IV, Stephanie Wilson, just confirmed with ESA astronaut Matthias Marr that what he's doing is indeed correct. He's routing cables to uh, camera port 8 um, by way of handrails. So right now he just installed the first of the Ethernet cables attaching it to a handrail and is going in the correct direction on his way to the second. You're getting a view now of Marr inching along um, using wire ties to connect the Ethernet cable to those handrails. Um, he'll follow along a path to the work site, and when he's finished, retrace his steps back to the seat of cart. Is unlocked and runs up the starboard side of the port seat of cart, and I have it on the handrail. I can't see the number on it, but it's the handrail stamps are next to the grid rattle. And hopefully keep it tucked up out of Matthias' way until I come back to get it later. And we copy handrail Santa next to a grid Bravo that works for us. Working on getting the APFR. And next is to retrieve the APFR from the port Zeta cart. Stow that on your BRT, and as you prefer, you can adjust the pitch setting uh, with it uh, installed on the cart or once you have it on your BRT. I'll try to go ahead and get it now. Okay, you're looking for a pitch of Papa Papa. Oh, this pitch now is way easier than the last APSR on the last EPA. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, Papa Papa is set. Copy Papa Papa. Have to get the other settings while I'm here. All right, it'll be Foxtrot 6. Foxtrot 6. I'm 
3670. Copy, 3670. You just saw the number 3670 peeking out from one of the handrails. Um, this, is, this means that Matias Marr is right on track and has been routing the Ethernet cable along the handrails correctly, and he's now on his second. Okay, those settings are in. Working on getting the BRT set up to take it out. Copy. We just switched over to the live view of NASA astronaut Rajachari. Um, that behind him is the robotic arm that he'll be attached to shortly. Right now he's working on configuring his tethers and will shortly be installing the portable foot restraint. And look, he's at 3686. Copy, you've got 3686 in work. Back now at the CETA cart of the International Space Station, where NASA astronaut Rajachari's got his hands on the portable foot restraint to be used to attach the spacesuit to the robotic arm to get to the work site. Okay, 
Yeah. BRT Red State, yes, on it's still on my BRT. How are you doing, Mr. Yes? I'm at 3810 and going now in Phoenix. That is? And Matthias, uh, for your translation, you would continue aft. You're looking next for handrail, P3 handrail 3809. Uh, so I'm not going up P3, like I'm now at 601. Isn't that the point where I follow the cable upward? Because Phoenix. Checking. Yeah, it's uh, the next one I have in front of my eyes is 3809. And we copy, we see that. Um, we believe the previous one you put down might make the routing uh, a little bit short. We believe you placed one at uh, 3810, and we'd like you to undo that if so. Okay. Uh, the routing should, however, be the same, no? To go around that corner here. Do you have a good view on it? Otherwise, uh, it will have radiator interference. We do have a good view. We're checking. Matthias, we're discussing, we do see uh, the concern with it going across that gap, but we think if you uh, simply secure it to 3809 and tend it around the gap, that should be good. All right. And uh, we're discussing, uh, stand by, we've been admiring your uh, handy work with the wire ties. So uh, stand by while we discuss it. Astronaut Stephanie Wilson serving as our ground IV today, just communicating with Matthias Marr. It looks like he had attached the Ethernet cable that he's routing to an incorrect handrail and that there was a better one that they had in mind originally. However, the ground crew is communicating now to see if the path that he had originally set was actually okay and if we'll have enough wire to get to the work site. The corner. If you can take up the slack so that it's taut around the corner uh, when you place the wire tie at 3809. Like this? We have a better view now, and that looks better. Thank you. I understand I can proceed in case it was luck. This would be a candidate to come back and uh, release it. And we like your plan. All right, the APFR is installed 12, Papa Papa, Fox 6, Black on Black. Good pull twist test. Copy all, and the pitch knob is locked and can be depressed? Is locked. It can out and move locked. Copy that. Nice work with the APFR. 
can go back and to retrieve the RBV and crew lock bag and stow it on your BRT. Copy. Good work. You just heard the ground talk to Roger Chari about the APFR, the articulating portable foot restraint. It looks like Chari's got it installed onto the robotic arm and has now been instructed to get his tool bag so he can go off to the RBVM work site. Meanwhile, Matias Marr is working to route an Ethernet cable. He's doing that in support of a later task in the spacewalk to install a wireless access port capable HD camera. This is a camera that's mounted to the outside of the space station. We've been upgrading the cameras as we've gone, the last two being installed in January of 2021. A BRT rat got wrapped around my camera here, so I'm just working on untangling that here before I attach it to the crew lock bug. Copy that. No hurry. While our space rockers go on with their tasks, Raja Chari connecting the portable foot restraint to the robotic arm and Matias Mar routing some ethernet cables, I thought we could take some Ask NASA questions. Again, if you have a question about our operations today, be sure to head over to Twitter and, take, and use hashtag AskNASA to submit your question. I have one from Bob here on Twitter who's asking, did the ammonia's hose cause a problem during the spacewalk? So no, it didn't cause a problem during a spacewalk, but we found that the ammonia was leaking from one of the hoses. Uh, fortunate, so that radiator had to be turned off because the hoses were removed in a spacewalk in 2018. So that all went well and the hose was brought back to the ground and refurbished and sent back up. But in the meantime, the radiator had to be turned off. Fortunately, the space station has six radiators. So it was still able to cool the space station down. Again, kind of like the radiator of your car works to cool down your engine. Uh, so we had five other ones fully functional and then replacing the hoses today just improves our capability for that. Copy Matias 3807. Where, what uh, module is that, just for my essay? It's P3, tell me, thanks. With the radiator.
Roger, we see you uh, preparing for ingress. One double check on your the safety tether pack that's on the arm. Can you verify that the reel is unlocked? I believe I heard you call that, but uh, please verify the reel is unlocked. Yep, that's both unlocked. Copy, thank you. The space station is now in an orbital daytime, flying over the South Pacific Ocean. You can see astronaut Rajachari egressing or getting aboard the Canadarm2, also known as the space station's robotics arm now. He'll be working to get into the portable foot restraint, which is what will attach him to the arm. NASA astronauts Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron will be inside of the space station at the controls. Uh, Tom, I'm ready to go to the RBBM back off position. I've got my tethers picked up from the ISS side, buckle on the uh, ingress handle, and my left bag clear. We copy, we copy. Go for the maneuver to RBBM back off. And the maneuver is about to begin. With a go from our flight director here, Raj Achari, is good to move to the work site at the controls of Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn. EV2 just lost the wire tie, this is your classic. Uh, I was pulled it out of the red and cut the finger on the red button. Sorry about that. Roger, we are starting motion, four meters, station forward. Okay. And Matthias, we copy. If you uh, were able to tell, could you, could you um, estimate a speed and direction? It's going straight in idea. Um, and speed, I would say, like, maybe half a meter per minute. A little bit faster. Maybe two, three meters per minute. But straight in idea. And we copy. A half meter to go. As we wait to see motion on the robotic arm with Rajatari on board, meanwhile, on another part of the International Space Station, astronaut Matthias Marr is about three wire ties away from completing his task. Um, as soon as he's done, 
he'll begin to. For your uh, departure rate, was that uh, half a meter per second? Um, yeah, yes, yeah, that's probably about right, half a meter per second. Once Matthias is more, once Matthias Mar is done with his task, he will retrace his steps across the handrails back to the seat of cart where they began. Roger, stand by as we set up for the first of three Joe Casas. Copy, three Joe Casas. Stand by. And I actually have a visual on you, Matthias, so I see where you're at. Okay. Roger, we're starting motion, seven meters, station Zenith. Your head will be facing starboard and Zenith. When we're done, we're in course rates. You copy? I've got my destination in sight. And he's off. Robotic arm operator Tom Marshburn just confirmed with Rajachari that he is in motion. Over my left shoulder. Over my left shoulder. Oh, yes. Yeah. Look at you. You got the transport. Fire time would be 38054. Copy. 3804, and we're excited that uh, Raj is having a chance to fly the smooth and friendly skies of Kayla and Tom. Absolutely. Way the business class. Chari is now on the robotic arm in flight to his workstation today, uh, just crossed over the southern tip of Argentina as he had a second to take a break and enjoy the ride. Roger, while you're on the arm, there's a few get-ahead steps that you can perform, uh, retrieving the GoPro from the crew lock bag and powering it on. You can verify the uh, light is blinking and stow it on your mini workstation facing out. 
And Roger, we are starting motion, eight meters aft, three meters later, you'll be facing the truss. Copy. You said I can go ahead and turn it on, Stephanie, now, so it runs? That's a firm. The Canadarm2 is still in motion with Rajachari on board. He's doing a couple of get-ahead tasks like powering on a GoPro that he brought with him. Provides the ground the opportunity to get an astronaut's view of what they'll be working on today. Meanwhile, Matthias Marr is working on to install the Ethernet cable to the last handrail. As soon as he's done with that, he'll retrace his steps and head back to the CETA cart where more equipment awaits him. Can see the UHF and pen on, clear of that. Pro's on. I'm getting the cat keeper out as well. I think what I saw Sonya do is still MWS end effectors, I'll try that. Roger, your last transmission was a bit uh, broken. I believe you said you've got the GoPro on, and uh, now you're working the uh, cap keeper. That's a good copy. Yep, I'm putting the cap keeper on my mini workstation, but leaving it right into the culotte bag. Copy that. I can see the work site. Copy, Roger. You have the work site in place and getting some snaps. And when convenient, we'll take a glove and hap check from you. Happens. Drives, it was when it came out. Uh, maybe a new smudge on my right interfinger at the first knuckle. Otherwise, then it could be four. Copy dry hap and a smudge on your uh, right knuckle for glove and hap checks. The PET is currently two hours, four minutes. Limiting consumable is EV2 Medox, seven hours, 30 minutes. Copy all. What's the one to cloud and hashtag from EV2? For after I'm done here. And Roger, uh, Matthias will get those after you're done. Yep. I'm at 136.85. It's right below the racetrack, and uh, yeah, I'm passing the page here. Copy 36.85. And for Roger, there are a couple of cautions. I could also reach you now. Do not. And for Robo, Roger. You are standby one, Stephanie. Roger, we are in Vern, so you are going to be moving. 
Two meters later, a little bit forward, starting motion. Okay. And for those two cautions, uh, do not translate on radiator beam and avoid cyclic loading. P-clamp standoff and radiator cinch bolt protrude into work envelope. Do not contact with helmet bubble. Mar is now working on connecting the very last of his Ethernet cables to the handrails. Um, the ground crew here just confirmed that the amount of slack looks good, so he followed the path correctly and will have plenty of margin for connecting the camera later on. Um, he's going to retrace his steps. Um, meanwhile, Rajachari is almost at his work site. He's got it in his sights, and Tom Marshburn relayed to him that Motion will begin once again to get him the rest of the way there. Bring my crew lock bag over to my right side here. Sonny has done that before, but it looks like it might work pretty well here. This is a brake track. Fixing the remaining cables. Copy, Matthias, and also copy, Raja. And um, as you're configuring uh, the crew lock bag, you can also uh, check other tethers and tools are clear and your ingress aid tucked. Because aid is cut in. Copy. My crew lock bag is set off to the right and it's clear of the radiator, which I can see off to my right. When we go to the other right side, I'll definitely remind me to move it back to my left side because it'll be close at that point. But... And Stephanie, <clears throat> cable is stowed and the attached to the remaining slack is attached to the base sack. I would now picking up my way back to pick up my green hook. This is Columbus. And we copy. Nice work with this cable routing. And uh, we'll take a glove and help check from you. Okay. And for Raja, you, uh, we are going for the GCA to publish 65 centimeters body in. And make sure your body and your APFR are clear. Copy, I've got the clearance. So I can see the boot plate if I bend over. If you, you want that meeting, look at that. Is that coming over the radio? And the see uh, go ahead with any time you need. Yeah, uh, quickly, I have to try my class uh, like uh, like initially, no changes. I mean, back to you, uh, so Copy, you, know, you got your translation path. If you don't need any words, I'm going to go next. In copy. Right, good, then, Tom, uh, copy Jay, and I'm uh, Stephanie, anything else before we start the GCH? Nothing additional. Please proceed. All right. Okay, Tom, uh, start GCH. Starting motion, body in. Okay, good motion. Copy, good motion. centimeters to go. Okay. Boot plate, plate is clear, clear of the truss and the jumpers. I cannot clear the boot plate to the radiator. I can't see that, Clarence. Can I clear my head to the radiator? That's good. After the system. see the boot plate. Can you go? We have you cleared by parallax. Two okay. camera views. Yep, I'm clear of this uh, standoff. Copy clear. Continue. 
Jari has arrived at the radiator beam valve module work site with our robotic arm operators working to get him in a position where he can begin his tasks. I think I can work with this. Uh, if I need to move port later, we'll address that, but let's call and call GCA complete for now. Copy. GCA complete and brakes are coming on. Copy. Brakes are on. Let me know what brakes are on. Brakes are on. You're go to begin work. Okay. I think I'm getting these caps to begin with, right, Stephanie? That's correct, Roger. You'll get the cap keeper to the caps on M1 and M2. Uh, Mike 1 and Mike 2, correct? Uh, that's correct. Right Mike now. 1 and Mike 2. Okay. Correct. You'll demate those caps Copy. with a pull out and turn. So Chari is now working to install two ammonia line jumpers. This task is expected to take it about an hour and a half if all goes as planned. Uh, it's pretty intricate work that Chari is doing. These jumpers, like all of the fluid lines on the International Space Station, use fluid quick disconnect connectors that can be a little difficult to use and take some time. The crew has had several training sessions on how to use them and has practiced their procedures today in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Chari was also given some time earlier in the week to study and become even more familiar with the connectors. Uh, this section of the radiator hasn't had hoses connected to it for several years, and caps have filled their place. So Chari is working to remove the caps now. Concur. Visually, I don't see any galling, at least on the side that I can see. On the M2 one, I can see a few white residues, maybe like three or four inside there. It looks like like hard water deposits, like two old flakes. Smaller than like a, a hair, though, in terms of width. And then on the 9 o'clock position of M2, if you're looking at it from ISS app, there's like uh, a streak of residue inside, like a ridge on the inner side, it looks like, but nothing loose and nothing came out when I took the cap. Copy the report, and uh, that is uh, uh, that is okay. Thanks for the work. has picked up the green hook. Copy, Matthias. Next, you'll translate to the port seat of cart and stow the reel bag on the cart using an adjustable, and you'll unbundle and retrieve the uh, Papos bag and stow that on your BRT. Copy out. You just heard Ground IV Stephanie Wilson talking to Matthias Marr. He's now done routing his Ethernet cables. We checked the red light was on the whole time. It was. But I believe we're doing uh, M1 first, the inboard one inch. That's a firm. You can retrieve the one inch jumper and prepare to mate F141 to Mike 1 on the inboard side. Mars working his way back to the seat of cart to stow the now empty real bag that had the ethernet cable in it and grabbing another bag to move on to his next task. I'm doing fine. I'm at the seat of cut, working my way around.
I've got bail. Uh, Number M. 141 in my hand, looking at M1. And I've got the bail at 12 o'clock. If that's the blocking lever locked. Ready for next words. Do you have any other things you need to talk about before we go into QB blocks? No, there's nothing from my side. I'm at the secret card swapping the bags as it reads, and then I will make my way to Columbus. Thank you. You have to come. We'll take more time here. Very slow. That sounds good, Matthias. Roger, for the mate steps, inspect the female QD for debris or damage. No debris or damage. Verify QD is ready to mate by checking detent button up. Time is up. I heard you report the locking colors in the locked position. Check forward white band not visible. Forward white band is not visible. Assess and counteract side loads prior to mate and mate the QD. So Charlie is now working to install the first of the two hoses that he'll be installing between the radiator and the radiator beam valve module. Since our hoses have two sides, he is first working on the radiator beam valve module side. Check forward white band visible. Pull visible. Perform pull test. Pull test. Perform visual gap test. No gap, right up against the thread. Copy, that's a good mate. You can remove the ret from the bale. And if you're able to, place P782 in the Zenith inboard TA clamp. And we just confirmed that the first side of the first hose has been properly mated or installed. It looks like it's also the more inboard one, is that correct? Or should it be the more outboard one? He's working with standard male-female connectors, also referred to as jack and plug connectors. He first mated the one inch jumper on the RBVM side, and then he's gonna move on to his second jumper. Then the robotic arm will move Chari just slightly over to the radiator side and connect the other end of the hoses. Underneath the MLI here for shading. Copy. Come to at Next is the three-quarter inch jumper. Four, I believe, uh, copy, F-140 to M-2. Good words. Chari just reported that he's going to move on and start working on the second hose that he's connecting to the radiator beam valve module side. Again, he'll be switching over to the radiator side and doing the same thing on the other side as soon as he's done. This is the bundle that you will be picking up afterwards, okay? Take a few seconds to clean up these wire ties before I try to take this. <laughs> Copy that.
Apple's bag is on my VIP. Also, the VIT red is attached to it, and I disconnect it now from the P4 bag. Copy that, Matthias. You will translate to the green hook location on the lab, and your green hook handrail is a 263. Copy. So need to spit. So everything's clear. But then I get moving. Mauer is all done rounding his Ethernet cables and made his way back to the seat cart He grabbed a different bag of pool of tools and is now about to go on his way to the Destiny module, also known as the U.S. Lab, on his tour of the space station today. And he's going to stow some equipment there. He'll grab a cable adapter from his bag and then make his way a short distance over to the far end of the European Space Agency's Columbus module. Mars en route now. Matthias, I'm going to take the con for some sheet. Yeah. Well, I feel like yeah. you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Uh, killer sounds like uh, Matthias is in a good spot, so ready for PD block. Um, MC to F140. Copy the mate uh, F141. I'm sorry, F140 to M2. The bail also goes to 12 o'clock. You can inspect the QD for debris or damage. Inspected, no damage on the female side. Verify the QD is ready to mate by checking the detent button up. The button is up and the locking collar is unlocked and the forward white band is not visible. Copy, assess and counteract side loads and mate the QD. Okay. The hose that you see on screen now will have ammonia flowing through it to help cool down the space station from the heat of the onboard electronics. Okay, it's made it. Forward white band is visible. Perform snapback test and check forward white band visible. That bad test for white band is visible, and I do not see a gap between it. I can see the threads up against the collar. Copy good gap test. Perform pull test. Good pull test as well. Charlie just confirmed that he has the jumpers attached to the radiator beam valve module side. This is the second hose that he's attaching and just confirmed that he did it and did a series of checks to confirm that it was good. You may hear some technical chatter between our ground IV, Stephanie Wilson, with our spacewalkers today. Uh, when she says mate F140 to M2, that's technical speak, just meaning that Chari has, is go to attach the female side to the male side, ensuring a good connection. Copy that. And I believe I stole the bag on 259. That's affirmed. Papa, so are you bag goes to 259. 
Doing work. And Matthias, could you hold your position, please? We're checking something uh, in our camera view. Matthias, nicely done. Please continue. Thank you. Mar is now at the Destiny module or the U.S. lab, and he's going to be stowing some equipment there so that he could make his way over to the European Space Agency's Columbus module. Once on Columbus, his goal is to install a jumper that supplies power and data from Columbus to the Bartolomeo Science Platform. He'll be working on the Columbus module's exterior for about a half an hour. Before that. I believe this next one is just a go maneuver, but uh, they can start setting that up while you're talking to them. All right, ready for your work. And you're right, Roger. Uh, go ahead. You, why don't you get the arm uh, ops in work? Okay. And Tommy, yeah, Kayla, Tom, uh, you, you are go for the to move to the radio back off position. My tools and feathers are clear. Okay, stand by for motion. 65 centimeters, body up. Chari was previously working on the radiator beam valve module side, and now he's going to be moving on the robotic arm just slightly to the other side of the hose on the radiator side. See good motion. I guess we have to start moving in. There's motion away from the ORU. Roger, we're starting motion now. Motion. Matthias, for you, once you have the Papa Zoru bag stowed, you'll retrieve the GoPro from it, power it on, stow it on your mini workstation facing out, and also retrieve the Papa's cable with a mini workstation RET. And I'll have a few cautions to read to you uh, before you start the translation. Okay, and the GoPro is already powered on. I have a good load on my mini workstation, and uh, with the bayonet, I also attach the red, paper red, and on my BRT red, I have out the Pathos cable. We copy the config, then uh, as you're translating to Columbus, avoid contact with the lab EWC antennas, the node G flu tray hard lines, and the node G CBM pedals. So we'll meet you next at the Papa's work site. And uh, Roger, please, you have the comp. All right. Copy it. Uh, I'll be have the count when needed. I've got the Kulak bag now on my left side. And uh, I'll let you know when you guys are ready for the chief data published radio TV. Roger, well, we're starting motion on the first show cast. Okay. About two minutes, we'll just take you to the next work site. Got it. Matthias, we're doing some show casts and stuff, so you feel free to talk as you need to. All right, so I will be moving very slowly out to Columbus. I'm full of precautions. If you're just joining us, we're about two and a half hours into our spacewalk today with NASA astronaut Raj Achari and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr. They began the first hour of their spacewalk together at the airlock where they were troubleshooting some issues with Matthias Marr's uh, helmet camera and the light that attaches to his helmet.
Once they got figured out, they split up, and they're now working at opposite ends of the truss. Uh, Raj Jatari has connected the first side of the two hoses to the radiator beam valve module and is, move, is currently moving over to the radiator side where he can connect the other, two, the other side of the hoses. Meanwhile, Matias Marr um, has gotten his supplies and attached them to the Destiny module, and he's going to make his way over to the Columbus module, where he'll install a jumper that supplies uh, power and data from Columbus to the Bartolomeo Science platform. An arm and a half reach to the radio on my right side. The Bartolomeo Science Platform is a spot on the space station where external payloads can be installed to either face the Earth or out into space. This means that scientific experiments on Earth observation, astrophysics, and more are possible on this platform. The spacewalkers will be installing an electrical jumper that supplies the power and data, and this sets the, the platform up for success for the future installation of additional science experiments by the robotic arm. We're setting up for the uh, next manual maneuver. We need your clearance between the EV, between your chest and the radiator cinch bolt, about 30 centimeters. And so you'll be given this clearance when maneuvering in. Hey, copy. I can see the cinch bolt. And sure. ingress aid is still tucked back. I've got eyes on the cinch bolt, and as well as the uh, P-clamp standoff bracket. And so we're good. And Matthias, any other things you need to say here? Oh, I'm right. on Columbus. Okay, all right, you can start GCA, Tom. Roger, we're ready for your GCA to publish. 70 centimeters, body in. Body, and let's start GCA. Starting GCA, starting motion. Good motion. Copy, good motion. Half meter to go. Copy. We've got a momentary loss of signal. This means that the communication is handing off from our TDRS or tracking and data relay satellites. It's an array of satellites that provide um, data and communication, basically our visual and our audio communication with the crew. We'll be back momentarily with our live views of our spacewalkers. We're at the published position. Let us know if you need additional GCA. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to definitely go body in some more. I can't fit my hands. Connectors there. Um, I can clear the cinch bolt, so it's really going to look like a conflict on your side. It's going to be really close to my left bite as I come in. Roger, we'll need you to clear your right shoulder in the radiator panel, and we're okay. standing by for how far body in you need to go. Yep, stand by. I'm going to reposition my crew lock back here, because once I get in under the cinch bolt, I'm not going to be able to get to it. Okay. Let me sort this out here, how I'm going to get in. Close enough. Oh, let's see. So I'll... Maybe a little more helmet. Let's try. I'm, what I'm thinking is we'll go with some body in and then maybe do some body roll to get me away from the pinch bolt. But um, let's just try the straight body in for now and see how that works out. I should have. I've got a whole arm to the pinch bolt right now. 
Uh, but I'm at least an arm's length away from the uh, cap. So let's go probably 30 centimeters body forward. Uh, but just give me a slow rate so I can ramp it out if I need to. We copy. 30 centimeters body in, going slow, starting motion. Copy, continue. Yeah, it's a 15 centimeters to go. Copy your top of. Copy 15 centimeters, you continue. Continuing. Okay, clear should be good. I'm able to lean right and boot plate here, so fish bolt's not a factor. Burp standoff's not a factor. Eight centimeters to go. Copy on clearance. To the right radiator panel. Five centimeters to go. Copy. Continue. There's 30 centimeters, Roger. Okay, stand by. Okay, I think I can work with this. I may have to do a GCA when it comes time to move the bales, but I should be able to make them from here. Let's call GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete. Stand by for breaks. Breaks are on, you're go to work. Copy. All right, I think I'm getting the caps first. Right to it. The firm, Raja, cap keeper to the caps on mic three and mic four, and you can demate the caps. I can't see the M3 and M4 labels from this vantage point here, but uh, they are the ones that look like what I expect to see down here. The uh, outboard, sorry, inboard one is off. Copy, inboard is uh, mic three, and that's off. And Matthias, we see you have arrived at the Papos work site, and you're working the uh, caps. That's correct. Trying to remove the first cap is a bit big on that. Um, working it slowly. Copy that. Slow and steady rinse away. No spot EMI bands. Copy, Matthias. Good inspection of P2. And for both sides, so I'm going to mate. We concur. Mate P2 to J2 Alpha. Three and four caps are off. Work at the GoPro survey. Copy that. Three was definitely the hardest cap to get off. It felt like it had some on the first 
uh, like the threads were sort of bits. So I probably the first one thread tried to get it off, and then it moved on after that. And we copy, and uh, after the GoPro survey, we'd like a power cycle of your WVS. Yeah, power cycle, but I don't see a green light. You want know, to try it again? Checking. And Roger, one more push should do it. Not a cycle, but just uh, now it'll be a power on. Okay, I see a green light. Copy green light. Try to get a little, try to get a little more GoPro footage before the sun goes down the rest of the way. I see a little bit of the residue flake type stuff on M3. I'd like the 11 o'clock position if you're looking at it. Uh, uh, ISS 4 being 12 o'clock. Um, takes in that one, and then at M4, little one at about 9 o'clock, and then again about 12 o'clock, but all very small. There's nothing that uh, came loose when I undid the camp. And and we copy the words. Thanks for the report. I'm one minute uh, twenty seconds from a handover, but I'll get the caution in, and then we'll pick up the mate on the other side. After opening a valve, limit torques at the QD interface to prevent twisting and open QD valve. Hey, Papos is connected. I was struggling with that one. Copy, Matthias. Nice work. Nice work. Can you copy the caution, Stephanie, and ready to set up for F-128, the outboard, one to M-4. That's affirm. You can uh, ready the and QD. The looking at it. The bill for this one goes to 10 o'clock and 20 seconds to a handover. 10 o'clock. So Roger Tari started his day at the radiator beam valve module work site. He took off some caps. Since there weren't hoses there previously, there were caps in their place, so he took them off. He connected two jumpers to the radiator beam valve module side, and we'll connect the jumpers to the radiator side and open the valve, since he's already on that side. Then he's going to go back to the radiator beam valve module side and open the valve there. Even though the valves on both sides of the hoses are connected and the hoses themselves are connected, no liquid will be flowing through even though both of the valves are open. He'll also install two electrical connectors that provide heater power. These electrical connectors give Mission Control the ability to control the internal valves in addition to heater power. These internal valves will be used by Mission Control, who can command the RBVM to open its internal valves and reactivate that part of the radiator and send ammonia through. This is going to be a, this is going to be a little more difficult, I think, for these QDs on this side. But. You know, when you're back with us, Stephanie. Uh, back with you, and just uh, we may have missed uh, Matthias's uh, report. Sounds like he's working on the mating of P2 alpha to JO2. I just removed the cap, and uh, the next one will be mating this one. 
Good. Copy that. That's a good, good. plan. Good. 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 Copy. You have a go to mate. And Roger. Uh, for Matthias, yeah, that's it. All synced up just like that for Matthias at the Papos work site. And uh, Raja, I'm ready for the to start the blocks with you for mate and opening of F128 to M4. I'm ready. Inspect the QD for debris or damage. No, de no debris or damage. Verify QD is ready to mate by checking detent button up. Locking collar in the locked position and forward white band not visible. Press button is up in the locked position and no forward white band is visible. Assess and counteract side loads prior to mate and mate the QD. Mars on the Columbus module now, working to mate some cables that will go from the Columbus module onto the Bartolomeo platform. Mara will move onto the platform, it's hit the platform itself to close some cable clamps on the zenith or space-facing side. This task allows for future installation of payloads by the robotic arm. Even though Mar is on the Columbus module now, he does have a bag stowed onto the U.S. Destiny module. And so when he's done with this task, he'll return to his tool bag and move on to some other tasks. Yep, just struggling with this QD. Trying to side of a different body position would help, or I don't think it's side loaded that I can tell. And Teray, I'm confirmed Papa's second connector is connected. Successfully made it. Leave out the center. Copy Matthias, so, mate it and over key. center. Nicely done. Yes. Thank you. That concludes the Papa's worksite. Moving on now to the Bartolomeo worksite. We concur. I have uh, two cautions to read uh, to you, but uh, first, uh, Roger, 
we copy. We're um, discussing if uh, there's any additional words we can offer to you for uh, mating the QD. And for Matthias, as you uh, translate to Bart, there's two cautions. Yay, nicely done, Roger. Uh, let me give uh, Matthias these cautions, and then I'll be Sorry. back with you and the rest of the mate blocks. Uh, for Matthias, do not touch the uh, connector doors on the Gold 2 interfaces and avoid contact with deployed booms and outrigger. We'll meet you later at the uh, BART worksite. Nicely done, Roger. Check that the forward white band is visible. Forward white band is visible. Of the snapback. Snapback with the forward white band still visible. Copy. Perform pull test and visual gap test. Good pull test. The ground crew here just confirmed with ESA astronaut Matthias Marr that he has successfully done his job on the Columbus module and he's now making his way just a short distance over to the Bartolomeo science platform. Visual gap test. Next we'll open the valve. Prior and during bail movement assess and counteract side loads and rotate the locking collar to the unlocked position. Is it unlocked? Depress the detent button and move the bale to the forward position. And I just, definitely, I just realized I forgot to drop the green hook on the lab. I have the green wheel with me here, but I have put down the fair lead on Columbus on Night C3 as the uh, plan. But the green hook is not on the lab. Okay, that's okay. And we copy that. Understand you've picked up your fair lead, and uh, that is okay. The fair lead here is still in place, Columbus. Copy. We're ready for you to retrieve the fair lead, and uh, you can continue to BART. Uh, I leave the fair lead until after the BART. Don't have that green hook. You may need to, you may need to pick up the fair lead. We don't catch those viewers and tenants, though. Copy that, and uh, we concur. Leave the fair lead in place. Yeah, and I need to drop the green hook here. Otherwise, I have not enough slack to go to that. So the green hook is now where the fair lead is. Matthias, we copy all, and that's a good config. Yeah, thank you. Okay, but this is from ISA, so you're going from the aft side of Columbus to the forward side, all right? Yes, I'm now at the forward side of Columbus at the Bartolomeo platform. All right. And then, Killer, I've got the uh, sail forward aft white band is visible. Copy. Is the detent button up? Great question. I'm trying to figure that out with my thumb ears. Matthias Marr retracing his steps just slightly as he's getting his, cook, his hooks configured as he moves his body from the Columbus module and onto the Bartolomeo science platform. Configuring these hooks uh, makes sure that he's safely attached to the station and has enough room to move around. Copy. The last step is to rotate, rotate the locking collar to the locked position. It's locked. All right, nice done, nice work mating and opening the valve. You can install the booty over the QD. I'm debating whether we should install the other one first before I do the MLI. Is it uh, as hard as it was to get to this access? I'm a little worried if I put the MLI on now, it's going to block my access to the inboard. If I can put it on and then take it off, it becomes a problem. So let's, I'll, I'll go ahead and put it on. Just give it a try. And the, that's, uh, that's up to you. If you think the MLI will be in your way, we're happy to wait. 
Let me just add spur down and then it's not in my way. That step is done already. The video is off. Just take it off. Okay. The MLI is installed. Copy. You can prepare the one inch uh, QD F129. We'll mate up to M3 on the inboard side. The hit cop again for the QD blocks. Let's see if you're ready. Have it. I'm at the Bartolomeo platform, dropping down my BRT, and then I start the plan. Okay. All right, Stephanie, ready for the QD blocks for the inboard. Uh, this one, 29. The female end is clean and no debris. Copy the bail. Uh, we'll clock towards 2 o'clock. We can verify the QD ready to mate by checking detent button up, locking collar in the locked position, and forward white band not visible. Locking collar's up. Sorry, deep breath. The button's up. The locking collar's locked, and no forward band is visible. Copy 2 o'clock. Assess and counteract side loads prior to mate and mate the QD. These QDs that the ground is talking about with astronaut Rajachari are the quick disconnect, uh, fluid quick disconnect, really. Um, they're part of the connectors, and they're a little finicky and can be a little difficult to work with at times. But Rajachari has practiced with these mechanisms both in the space station, on the ground, and in the pool of the neutral buoyancy lab. It is mated, forward white band is visible. Excellent. Perform snapback test. Check forward white band visible. The snapback test with the forward white band still visible. Perform pull test and visual gap test. Pull test. Good job, check. Copy, good gap test. Yeah, ready to open. Roger for opening the valve. Prior and during bail movement, assess and counteract side loads. Rotate the locking collar to the unlocked position. Our ground IV is now walking astronaut Rajachari through the valve opening process. He's got both ends of the both hoses connected, and so now he's working to open up the valves. Even though the valves will be open, uh, no ammonia will be flowing, th flowing through until mission control sends the command sometime after the spacewalk. Check detent button up. Detent button is up. Copy. You can retrieve the uh, one inch spid uh, from the bag and uh, install that on the QD. Okay. You can talk uh, as you need, Mr. Yeswell, more for this. Copy. I'm driving my first boat, boat number 10.
Copy, Matias, bolt number 10. My right. done with the GoPro, by the way. That off the workstation. We're now three hours into today's spacewalk with European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr on the Bartolomeo platform. He is loosening some clamps to make it easier for future installation of scientific payloads onto the Bartolomeo platform using the robotic arm. He's on the second clamp now, um, working his way down a series of clamps on his task list, um, but he's going to do as many as he has time for. Understand. Put the cap keeper back in the bay, back too, just so I can get some more room to breathe in here. I know I need that for the MTG later, but I'll deal with that when I get to the other side. And Roger, up to you. If you you can uh, put the cap keeper in the crew lock bag also. Ten and eight uh, closed. Could be going to both uh, first out with a green light. Copy, Matthias. Ten and eight closed. You're hearing the voice of Matthias Marr as he is calling out what he sees on his PGT or pistol grip tool. That's the tool that he's using to clamp the bolts that he's working on. He's got a series on his task list. Yeah, let's see. He's the hero of all of us. Cat keeper, GoPro back in the bag, spits coming out. Copy. You're looking at the PGT in motion, or the pistol grip tool. Uh, it's basically a cordless drill, and the drill has a small screen that displays the PGT's uh, speed and torque settings. This comes in handy, as the number of turns oft often has to be really precise. The locking tabs are engaged to the bail boss. Copy. And Good pull test. Press them, and they snap back in the space. Good pull test. Okay, we are complete with the mate and open valve steps for F-129 to M-3. You can install uh, booties over the QDs. Yeah, I can take my right off the speed, correct? That's affirmed. That spit went on way too easy, which means inbound to have problems on the other. Right. The booty is back on. Ditch bolt, I pushed body left, infected it six and a half degrees off. And with that, I believe I am ready to go to the RBB on back off position. It requires GCA. And that's also, I think, the point where you guys want to talk with the GS about whether it's time to go to the gem or not. Okay. Guys, want me to break out? I have, <coughs> in addition to close the bracket number one and bracket number thirteen, so four in total. And uh, Stanley, we're just making let's get the arms going.
And Tom, you're go for the RBBM back off position. Talking about Matthias as needed. And Stephanie, this is Matthias. Go ahead, Matthias. Uh, that was the breakout point for me to go to Jim. Um, if that's so, you yeah, would like to get your go. I confirm that I have closed four brackets all the between talked out lights. So good talk. It's bracket eight, ten, one, and thirteen. We copy 8, 10, 1, and 13 are closed at the BART work site for the clamps, and we're discussing a forward plan. Do you want me to work in the I start working? Sure. And Matthias, uh, we also wanted to check with you uh, how your hands are feeling. Uh, okay. My hands, my hands are good, sorry, I understood that. And we copy. You're good to go to Jim. We're discussing if uh, additional work here at the work site. Roger, we're about to start in motion because of lighting conditions. We are going to ask you make this to make this a GCA to published and uh, clear your right side of your body, right side of your boot plate with the radiator. Okay. I could do that. What direction are we going? This body out? Out 70 centimeters. Okay, yep. I've got the clearance there for you. Starting motion, one meter. Copy, I see good motion. I should have said start GCA since we're doing the big step. Copy, good motion. Matthias Marr just confirmed with the grounds that he has completed work on the first four clamps in his series of tasks. He has quite a few on his list, but the first four were priority order. The rest was only if time were to allow. He's going to work on a couple of more before moving over to the gym. This is the Japanese module. There's some multi-layer insulation that has popped open, so Marr will work to close the flap and secure it to some nearby handrails with a wire tie. Reinstalling the thermal blanket will help protect some cabling on the nader side of the module. Copy. Roger, I think we can end GCA now, if you agree. Okay, if you're good with it, yep, GCA complete. Send them for the next showcast. Copy. Matthias, for you, we'd like you to continue to clamp four. Once clamp four is complete, we'll have you uh, translate uh, back through to Columbus, pick up the uh, Papa's ORU bag, and head to the GEM MLI task. Okay, so I closed plant number two, but plant number two never, like, bottoms out. I gave it, I would say, even 20 turns. It's fully closed, but uh, it, the thread still keeps on spinning. But it's still spinning. But it's, uh, I can pull on it, it doesn't open. Copy. Thank you for the report. Uh, we can we uh, consider clamp two complete. Uh, please continue to clamp three and clamps four. Mars got his tasks laid out for him. He's going to continue work on just a couple more bolts, and then he's going to retrieve his bag that he's had parked on the Destiny module and move, move over to the Japanese module. Uh, meanwhile, Rajachari is in motion aboard the robotic arm.
get the cap keeper back out of your crew lock bag, Stephanie. And I'm also going to get the spit out while I'm moving here and have that ready. Copy, Roger. You can see the number 16 in the corner of your screen there. That means that you're seeing things from the point of view of astronaut Raj Achari. We're looking through his helmet camera right now. To recap some of his tasks, he first installed the hoses to the radiator beam valve module side, then moved over to the radiator side to connect the other end of those hoses into the radiator. He opened up the valve on the radiator side and has just moved over to the radiator beam valve module side right where he started his task to open the valves on that side as well. Roger, the next is a GCA to published. Can you clear the front of your body and your boot plate? It'll be 65 centimeters, body in. I will be in a second. Once I get the crew lock bag put back together. Copy. The valves that Chari is working to open will allow the capability for mission control here on the ground to run ammonia through these hoses that he just hooked up. Uh, no hoses, no ammonia is going to flow through now, uh, but they're going to test it out at the end of the sometime after the EVA. Um, when the ammonia flows to the radiator, the radiator will be back online, able to provide cooling for the. International Space Station and its onboard systems. Fortunately, um, the space station is functioning just fine with its other five radiators working at full capacity. And then the Rajachari is allowing us to have the ability just for some improved performance on the radiator. This also gives us some flexibility in case another uh, radiator beam valve module goes down, then we'll know that with some certainty that we'll be okay with some margin. Right back with you now, Tom, and it's going to be body in GCA back to the uh, work site. Okay, farm, body in 65 centimeters back to the work site. Okay, and I am, uh, Matthias, anything you can talk about here in the next few minutes? There you go. I'm about to take the comms of the GCA, anything you yeah, can talk yeah, about? No, I don't do anything. I'm working clamp three, clamp right. four is closed. All right, copy. And sun's uh, coming our way shortly, and Tom, I'm ready to start GCA. Copy, we're starting motion body in. Copy. Roger, you're checking the body Copy. front and front of boot plate clearance. Hey, sir. Yeah. Yeah, good clearance. I see motion. Or actually, that's a speed catching. Clearance? You got good clearance, yeah. Fifteen to go. Copy. Still good clearance from the boot That is the uh, published position. Anything else you need? Come by.
Okay, you got the clearance uh, for the front of your body yep. and the boot plate. You can see the boot plate. Well. centimeters in. Ready motion. You're getting a live look at the Bartolomeo science platform on the European uh, Columbus module, where Matthias Maurer is working on some bolts. That's your extra 10. Okay. I think this is going to work just fine. Let's call GTA complete. T complete. You're go to work. Yep. And I believe we're starting uh, with 141 on this time, Stephanie, which is the inboard one. That's true. That's affirmed. We'd start on the one inch on the inboard side. I uh, need to give uh, Matthias a couple words. The uh, TA clamp, Matthias, that's in your view. Uh, we would like you to close it. We're switching back and forth on our views here of our two spacewalkers working at opposite ends of the truss. Here, this is Matthias Maurer finishing his work on some clamps on the Bartolomeo science platform that will allow for the installation of future science experiments to be attached to the platform. Meanwhile, Raj Achari is working on the robotic arm. He's working on his final steps to install the radiator beam valve module jumper. Right now, he's working on the first hose to open up one of the valves on the radiator beam valve module side. Green hook. Pick both of them up. Translate to the Papas ORU bag. Drop your green hook there. Stow the caps and the GoPro in the bag. And then head to the JAM MLI worksite. And just for completeness, I um, Clamp number four tossed out well with the green light. Clamp number three tossed also out with the, there's still a small visual gap remaining. So uh, that's a clamp that didn't close as expected with the certain terms. And we copy. Thanks for the report. We're happy. Thank you. We're happy. I'm double happy. Excellent. All right, Roger. Ready to work on the one inch QD on the inboard side to open the valve. I'm ready. Prior and during bell movement, assess and counteract side loads and rotate the locking collar to the unlocked position. Come off. Depress detent button and move bell to the forward position. Check aft white band visible. Okay, that's why band is visible. Check detent button up. It's up, it could be depressed and pops back up. Copy that. You can retrieve the SPID uh, from the crew lock bag and install it. Chari on your screen now, working to open up the valves on the radiator beam valve module side. So he installed one side of the hoses, moved on to the other to install uh, the other side of the hoses and open up the valves while he was there. Now he's moved over to his original work site to work on opening the valves there. He's on the a valve on the first hose that he installed, moving on to the second shortly. Meanwhile, Mar is on his way. He's in motion to the Destiny module where he's kept one of his tool bags, and then he'll be heading over to fix some multi-layer insulation or a thermal blanket that's popped open, and he's going to secure it to a handrail. The SPID is on. I can definitely see one of the locking tabs. I've tested it, back to the engage. I'm 
working on trying to get a visual of the second one. I suspect it is based on its position, but I can't get eyes on it. Copy. And actually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a, on the interior side of the spit, there's a white line, and that white line is flush with the top of the spit. I think, is that a, another way to check that it's locked? I can't see the tags. Checking. While Mar is headed to his work site, I wanted to remind everyone that we will be taking your Ask NASA questions. So if you have a question about our spacewalk today, head over to Twitter and submit yours using hashtag AskNASA. I've got one from at Vagabondo right now, who asks who's the Capcom for today's spacewalk. Well, our Capcom is Alex Conalecos, but he's actually not working this operation right now. The Capcom is communicating with the crew inside of the space station while NASA astronaut Stephanie Wilson, who you see on your screen now, is communicating to our spacewalkers. Instead of Capcom, we call her the ground IV. On the interior of that, I can see the white line is flush uh, with the top of the spit, which matches the right side. I just look like my hand in between the two TVs to actually get a beer for sure on it. I'll, I'll, I'll keep working on it. But. Well, we copy and um, perform a pull test. Okay, good pull test. Doesn't move. If it passes the pull test, uh, we're happy. Install the QD over and install the booty over the QD. Work of taking the rent off and putting the phone in the line. And with a successful valve opening, Rajachari just got the OK from the ground to install a covering over the quick disconnect connectors that he's been working with on our spacewalk today. As Mar is on his way to the Japanese module to fix some thermal blanket, we hope to get our live views back as soon as he gets there. Um, should just be a short distance away from where he is on his tour of the space station today, and we expect to get our live views and communication with the ground back shortly. MOI is installed on Fox 141. Copy, Roger. Nice work. Next is the three quarter QD F140 to M2. You may have heard astronaut Raj Atari call out the MLI, or multi-layer insulation, not to be confused with where Matthias Marr is headed. He is not yet at the Japanese module where he'll be installing that insulation, and Raj Atari is just talking about some at his own work site. Copy, Matthias, thanks for the words. Roger, to open the valve, prior and during bail movement, assess and counteract side loads and rotate the locking collar to the unlocked position. Unlocked. Depress detent button and move bail to the forward position. It's forward, bail is forward, aft white band is visible. 
Copy. Check detent button up. Button's up. To be depressed and raise back up. Excellent. Rotate the locking collar to the lock position. It's in the lock position. Copy that. You can remove any rets and uh, install the booty over the queue. You just heard the call out, put the booty over the cutie. In spacewalking terms, this means Rajachari is going to be putting a protective cover over the quick disconnect that he's been working with throughout his task working on the radiator beam valve module. You're getting a split screen look now at our two spacewalking astronauts on opposite sides of the truss. After they complete their respective tasks um, that they're working on now, they're actually going to meet up for the first time from the beginning of the spacewalk to work on installing a camera together before Matias Mara goes off to work on other tasks. And Stephanie Smodet, I will keep the uh, GoPro with me for this translation. And Matthias, we like your plan. All right, MLI is installed, bail covers, the bails are covered. And with that, I believe we're ready for a GCA to publish end of the GL panel. Roger, are we copy? We're going to take you body out 10 centimeters and then body down 25 centimeters and ready for motion on your GCA. Okay, uh, Matthias, you need anything? No, I'm good. I have it all. I'm going okay. to the gym for your awareness. Copy. All right, let's start GCA. Starting GCA, starting motion. All right, so you get motion away. Good motion. Your body out, 25 centimeters now, body down. Copy. I see good motion body down towards the FTGL panel. Good motion. Plate is clear, radiator is clear, all is clear. Copy good clearances. Motion is complete. Let us know if you need additional GCA. Well, probably am going to need more body down, I think. Um, I'd probably going to need body down 15 centimeters and body in 10 centimeters. Copy. We'll start with body down 15 centimeters okay. and starting motion. We're nearly three and a half hours into, day, into today's spacewalk, and astronaut Raja Chari is working on the last task of his radiator beam valve module jumper installation. His last task here that he's moving on to on the robotic arm is to mate two electrical connectors that will provide heater power. Not only does it provide heater power, but it also gives mission control the ability to control the valves and the ammonia that flows through them. Roger, there's 10 body in. Okay. If that should work, let's call GCA complete. GCA complete, you're go to work. I'll be go to work and working on caps to begin with. Awesome. That's 
Correct, Roger. Uh, attach the cap keeper to the jack caps on J782 and 783. As you're working to demate those caps, there's one warning. Demate, demated NZGLs could be hot after one hour exposure to direct sunlight. Our spacewalkers have completed a number of tasks so far. Uh, Matthias Mars started out the day routing an Ethernet cable. That'll be used um, pretty soon when the spacewalkers move on to install a camera. Uh, Matthias Marr also installed a jumper onto the Columbus module and released some cable clamps onto the Bartolomeo platform to allow for future payloads to be installed there. Copy 782. Copy 782. Copy. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Raj Achari will complete his first task when he mates the heater cables, which he's about to do now, that will complete the installation of the RBVM jumper cables, jumper hoses. Copy, Matthias. Copy. You can see on your screen the caps that Raj Achari was just working to remove. Now that they're removed, um, he is free to install the heater cables. How are you doing? Good. On the gym, taking it slowly but steady. Okay. Trying now to deploy my wire ties. It'll take a bit, so don't worry if I'm not talking a lot. Okay. okay. Uh, crew up bag is set up and I'm ready to mate MZGLs. And I believe I'm going uh, 782 to 782 and 783 to 783. That's affirmed. And we'll take uh, inspections and an over center report. So 782, 782, good pin, post fog, did you my band? Um,
Our spacewalk began just about three and a half hours ago with Rajachari first out the gate of the Quest airlock, followed by his counterpart, Matthias Maurer. They spent about an hour at the airlock working a problem with the camera and onboard light that was attached to Matthias Mars. Spacesuit had a little trouble staying on, but Rajachari was able to troubleshoot with the ground and get that secure. And then they were on their way for their other tasks. While Rajachari was setting up the robotic arm that he's on now and will be spending through the rest of the spacewalk, Matthias Maurer got started on other tasks. He routed an ethernet cable and attached them to some handrails. This is gonna be used later on a camera that they'll be working on in just a few minutes. He also installed a jumper onto the Columbus module and then moved over and, did, and released some clamps on the Bartolomeo science platform, allowing for the future installation by our robotic arm after the EVA. Right now, Rajatari is working on concluding his first task of the day and the priority for the spacewalk, the RBVM jumper installation. He got the hoses installed and the valves open, and now he's just working to install some heater power. Matthias Marr is at the Japanese module installing some loose, installa some loose insulation, just using Velcro and a wire tie to secure it back into place to, su to support the cables that were exposed. As soon as that's over, our spacewalkers today are going to join together for the first time since the beginning of their EVA to work on a camera replacement and installation. This is an HD camera that sits on the outside of the International Space Station. It is has a wireless access point that they'll be working around and working to install. Um, this is a series of cameras that is being installed, the last two being installed January of 2021 by spacewalkers Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover. And Roger, for 782, does it appear that the cable is too tight? Would releasing it from the TA clamp give you some additional uh, room to work? I don't think so. It actually seems like, I'm sure it's something I'm doing wrong, but like the tolerance, so if I'm looking at the connector, the one on this side is touching, gets flush with the, uh, the other side, but this one won't get flush. I can pretty sure I can see those locking tabs, the keying going in, that might be off a little bit, so it's just not lining on the, as I'm looking at this 3 o'clock size. I'll, maybe I can try the CA clamp for a second, but I don't think that's what's causing, it doesn't seem like it's loading or the alignment problem. And we copy, we're discussing. Roger, can you verify that the lever is still fully aft? Yep, it is fully aft. Okay, copy, yeah, thank you. Fully aft and over center. Yeah, you can see, like, I don't know if you can see my camera view, but on this side, which is the aft side, so it's aligned on the forward side, touching. On the right side, it won't settle into the I don't see any galling or damage on the... Roger, we do see it in your helmet camera. Unfortunately, 783 is, uh, for us, a, a bit blocking the view of 782.
Right now, you're getting a live view of Matias Mar as he works to secure that insulation with wire ties. Basically, this is just a thermal blanket that works to protect the onboard electronics and wires that may be exposed to the vacuum of space, and doing so just puts it back into place. It had previously become undone. Copy, full forward, over center. Uh, cleverly done. I had to guess, I'd say maybe there's like, it's a tiny bit of offset in the keying and it was, you just had to get kind of wedged in on this side first. Couldn't go for the other side first. Okay, uh, working on hiding this under the MLI panel. Copy. I don't know if you can see in the diagram, uh, so the seven eight Two routing is fine. It goes under the like, corner of MLI, but the 783 routing, uh, the only way to cover that with MLI would be to pick up that flap, which I think it said not to pick up in the breathing package. So I can leave it like that if you're happy with this, or I can pick that flap up and put it over the top of it. Checking. While Matthias Maurer is working with multi-layer insulation or a thermal blanket on the Japanese module, astronaut Raj Achari is working with his own multi-layer insulation, covering up his work as he works to mate two electrical connectors that provide heater power, and he just wants to make sure that they are protected with a the thermal blanket as well. Okay. And that is a... Yeah, I believe we're go. go. All right. So Tom and Caleb... Yes. When you're ready, uh, you are go to take me to the MDGL back off position. Copy. We're starting motion, body out, 75 centimeters, and a little bit of body up, and then we'll set up for the Jocast. Starting motion. With those two electrical connectors fully installed, uh, it's nice work done by NASA astronaut Roger Chari. He's in motion once again soon at the direction of astronauts Tom Marshburn and Caleb Barron. While I'm moving Stephanie, I believe I want to get the round scoop and camera cover out and wrench my MWS, correct? Out of the bag, to set up for later. That's a firm. <laughs> See, it has the uh, gem treating you. Uh, I'm done with the gem. I'm on to my way back. I didn't want to step into your TCA. But uh, first wire ties are deployed, no issues at all, and yeah, rolling back to uh, the lab, taking up the back and going into the airlock. Yeah, yeah, just talk as needed. We're not doing GCA right now. We're just moving on, but so okay. Feel free to okay. Roger, we're about to start a two and a half minute joke cast. Seven meters port, you'll be turned head down and facing port. Starting motion. Okay. With Mars insulation installation complete, he is moving back to the Destiny module where he had temporarily stowed some storage bags. Um, he'll grab his stuff and then move back to the airlock where he'll swap out bags and then go to meet Rajatari at the work site for the camera installation. Hold while the ground performs a heater checkout. Happy? Copy off. Uh, stop motion then. We're pausing. Meanwhile, Rajatari installed two electrical connectors and the ground here is gonna just verify that the connectors are working. Wilco. My bad, sorry about that, Tom, I forgot they wanted to do that before we're done. No, that's on us, Grinder. Uh, 
And I've got the uh, open window cover on my MWS reps. Look at him. Let's throw it over there for now. Copy, Roger. Lock that guy's away for this. Matias, we see you en route, translating to your green hook. Uh, when convenient, I'll take a glove okay. and half check from you. Let me drop a load course, one more. Two you glove and a half check. A glove, it's good. I would say no, no changes to the initial state. My hat is dry. Copy. Good gloves. Dry hat. And uh, Stephanie, I would be picking up the papers back, and you guys can think if you want to pause during the ingress in the airlock, because I still have the GoPro on my chest, and I could knock off this task if you guys are thinking of knocking it off. And we copy. We'll discuss it, and that's a good plan. You'll pick up the Papos ORU bag and translate to the airlock. Tom and Kayla, if your work, um, I'm just noticing that probably all that moving around by the QDs, I think I'm the safety tether attached to the arm may have wrapped up underneath my swing arm. So uh, at some point, if you have camera views of that, it'll be available. But when I get out of the arm, I'll probably need a little bit of help to know which way to turn to get back out of it. We copy. We'll let you know. Roger, Kayla, and Tom, good news. There's a good checkout of the heaters from the ground. So we go to continue arm ops. And uh, my fault also for not uh, catching that. My apologies. No problem. We'll all make mistakes. I've been playing uh, great news on the heater checkout. And ready to continue motion with you, Tom. Thanks for watching over us, Stephanie. We are starting motion again. Roger Chari previously completed, completed his last task on the radiator beam valve module installation by mating two electrical connectors that will provide heater powder, and the ground just did a check out of the heater and confirmed that it did work. Roger Chari is now on the move to his next web to his next work site at the camera that he'll be working to install. You're looking at a live view of Matthias Marr as he's on the Destiny module collecting his items that he brought out there with him. He's going to bring all of those items to the airlock and replace them for the camera bag. He'll be meeting up with Roger Charlie Chari after he's got his bag from the airlock, and the two will meet up for the first time since the beginning of the EVA. And Stephanie, I can confirm that that PTU lock lever that you wanted me to look for, it is uh, oriented Bader Zena, so it runs along the stanchion. That's good news, and that's a good config. Timing wise, Stephanie, are we buying a flag through the bag swap or is this setting up to go the bag swap next? Wait and see, boat. 
think we're pretty well synced, it seems like. Checking. And Roger, we are standing by in for the um, back swap geocast. We can set that up now or stand by until Matthias is back with you. So I will be running late for that. I need to clear a surface net to my BRT. Still discussing. Stand by. I've got uh, other stuff. I got the scoop and stuff with me, so I can get things done. So. I did the snack. But uh, I lost some time. Yeah, no worries. Matthias walking back to the airlock. Copy, Matthias. And Roger, Matthias, appreciate your patience. We're still uh, discussing. Be back with you shortly. Green hook. Thing. I need to go back and pick up my green hook. Good. Copy, you're on your way back to get the green hook. Yeah, it's only later.
Matthias, we see you at your Green Hook location. Uh, please hold. Yep. We're now approaching the almost at the four hour mark of our spacewalk today. Uh, ground controllers here in Mission Control are looking at the time and what tasks we may, be, we may be able to accomplish in the rest of the EVA time. You may already. We believe your safety tether might be wrapped around one of your legs, uh, your left leg. Matthias Maurer is at the airlock now. We think if you align your feet uh, pointed towards the airlock, so actually turn back in the direction from whence you came, we think that will help. Okay. It's getting a bit of a mess. Sounds like you have energies of it, but if you can orient me in the arm and I can put eyes on, I'm not too happy to help me enough. And Matthias, come back uh, about 90 degrees with your legs uh, in line with the module. This way or the other way? Uh, that way. The, the, this way. Oh, uh, no, no, come back the, uh, the other way. Turn towards your left side. And hold here. Matthias Maurer now at the airlock, working with the ground crew here in Mission Control Houston to get his tethers configured in a point that he won't be tangled and will be able to proceed with his tasks. And Matthias, the safety tether is under your left leg. And then running over your uh, left arm and your left shoulder. Okay, so if I... And Matthias, now it looks as though it's clear from your leg and it's only over your left shoulder. As Mar maneuvers his body to free himself of his tether, you periodically get some views of Earth poking through. The space station is currently flying over the western tip of Algeria. And you can release the green hook. Okay, so, do not... Yes, now you see it. And it, uh, although it's not around your leg, it is still around your back. So it's uh, around your back and under the pliss. And so we need you to rotate the, we think rotating the other way would help. This way? Rotate towards your left clockwise. Continue in that direction. Good motion. Uh, Good motion, continue. This way, I brought myself. Okay. Good motion, continue. Okay. Good motion, continue. Pause here. Now the tether is on your right side, and you might be able to see it.
Now it's clear from your shoulders and helmet, it might just be tucked along uh, on your PGT. Okay, but if I keep on turning this way, that's it. All right, stop motion. Now it's over your right arm, now you've cleared it. Good. Wow, thank you, Stephanie. That was a space dance. Nice work. You may have seen the tether floating between Matthias's legs and across his, behind his right knee. That was the tether giving him some problems, but he just freed himself of his tether and now is free to go on to his next task. Very good. I'll fix the green hook as soon as I get closer. Copy. Arriving at the seat parade. Copy. And Roger, while we continue to discuss, I can take a glove and hap check from you. And my hap is dry. I've got uh, like maybe a smudge on the tip of my right ring finger and a new smudge on my left thumb. Um, Kind of a linear. Okay. Happy dry hat and uh, kind of a linear smudge on your right uh, right index finger. Left thumb, thumb and right uh, right ring finger of draw that one. Okay. Left thumb and right uh, right ring finger. Okay, Matisse at the airlock. Um, I see that my green reel didn't pull in all, so there's one meter slack. I believe that was probably due to the speed that I came back. It was probably an issue that Roger had the other day. Um, I hope it will clear during the way out. When we copy, there's uh, about a meter slack on your green reel. You're getting a live view now of Mission Control Houston. Flight Director Paul Kanya in the suit, pacing on your screen there. Behind him, EVA Officer Sandy Fletcher. They're discussing the spacewalk, seeing how much time they have left and what tasks they want to prioritize. The thermal cover. Matthias, we caught you in a handover. I believe you say you're opening the thermal cover. Yes. 
Opening the summer cover. Copy. Bring my compass back in sight. And Roger, Matias, we appreciate your patience. Just, uh, just very vague words while we continue to uh, sharpen our pencils. We're just looking at the time remaining and what tasks uh, fit, back, fit best in that time. We're not tracking any issues, but we're just uh, getting the forward plan together for you. So I'm in the airlock, I take off the GoPro, I switch it off, I put it back in the bag. Or do you want to have the inspection done? Which I think you don't want. The flight is waiting on me now. You're now looking through the eyes of European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer in the Quest airlock, looking at his supplies and seeing what equipment that he can bring out with him as Rajatari is connected to the station's robotic arm. Roger, Matias, Kayla, and Tom, we have sharpened our pencils. It is currently 4 hours, 10 minutes PET. Limiting consumable is, four, is 6 hours, 44 minutes on EV2 Medox. With that information, we would like to continue the EVA with a CP8 focus. We would head both Roger and Matias to the CP8 worksite. Matias would uh, hang there while uh, Roger does some of the initial work for Roger. Uh, and for Matias, only the CP8 activities would remain for the EVA, and then we would work to clean up and ingress. And Robotics is ready to support continuing with the bag swap Jocast on your go.
After a momentary pause so the ground crew can evaluate the remaining tasks of the day, they decided that the crew is going to continue on to the camera port 8 work site. You may are here referred to as CP8. They're going to perform a bag swap. So Matthias Marr is in the airlock now to grab the bag and bring it to Rajachari. The bag contains the camera. Um, a camera is already at the camera port 8 work site, and Rajachari will work to remove it and swap it with this new camera. I am ready. Ground is ready. And Stephanie, if you agree, we'll uh, start Raja in for the back swap position. And Tom Kayla, we do concur. I'm getting additional words. Uh, you, you, we would like you to proceed to the back swap position. You're going to end up uh, flying those through that position to another position, and we'll have those words for you. Okay, we copy that. We'll start moving towards the back swap position, understanding that we'll fly through that. Good read back. Roger, we're starting motion. Your head's going to be moving to the truss. It'll end up about a half meter from structure. Two is outside of the hatch. The yeah, camera bag is attached to the BRT. The portal with the BRT red. And I'm proceeding with closing the thermal cover. Okay, Matthias. Matthias Marr has just ingressed from the Quest airlock for the second time today, first time beginning his spacewalk, the second time to stow a bag that he was using previously on the Columbus and Bartolomeo platform now retrieving a camera, an HD camera, that he'll be bringing now to NASA astronaut Raja Chari. He's working right now to close the hatch thermal cover. Right, look, right side, the handle is down. Place the handle is down. Copy, safer handles down. Wanted inventory of the crew lock bag while uh, what's happening. Checking. Rajatari's next tasks include disconnecting an old camera and temporarily stowing it away, and then he'll be replacing the old external high-definition camera with one with a wireless access port that can provide improved two-way high data rate communication between external payloads and our Earth. Don't forget my single, my yes, single yes. safe together still out there. It is, and I'm clear of it. But when we come back, it's it's definitely partially uh, very close.
So always be mindful when you come back, okay? The white bag that you see floating on the top of the screen next to our space walker is what is the bag that's containing the high definition camera that Maurer is working to deliver. We'd like your clearance to the uh, CP8 camera. Okay. Body in one meter. Okay, I've got the clearance to the camera. Let's start PCA. Copy, starting motion. Motion towards the camera. Copy, good motion. Half meter to go. Copy. I won't get a whole half meter. I'm on video station, it's pretty close here. And you still got good clearance? 20 to go. Copy. Back yet, so we get. Seen to go. Seen to go. Okay, Wrapping out, motion stop where it published. Okay. And just so I understand, what, uh, is there another position that would get me to the NVGLs? Or is that it? I wouldn't be able to reach them from here. I can get the scoop on from here, and I can get the locking clamp, but I don't think I can get the MGTL from this position. I'd have to go body down. And Roger, that's later in our procedure. Is standing by if Houston has any words. And Tom, those are good words. We concur that the, there is a later position for the NZGL access. So big picture. Um, uh -huh. Roger, let me see if you need any more GCA. Yeah. And other. If you understand the plan a bit here, I guess what I'm going to try, what am I trying to do with this position? Copy. We're about a minute to handover. Big picture. Uh, I don't want to call. What? For this position, this is where you install the window cover and the. Uh, install the window cover, but I'll have some words for you prior to that. But big picture, uh, you guys will keep your respective bags, so we bypass the bag swap R&R. We'll work on the uh, camera R&R. We would like, uh, once Matthias gets into position to CP8, we'd like him to hold and rest a bit for Medox. You want to hold immediately? You said once you get once you get oh, okay, in position. Once I get to you. Okay, so good work. Uh, if I'm just doing the scoop and window cover from here, I can do that from this position, so we can call DCA complete for that task. Okay, we copy. We think you're saying NGCA. Yeah, NGCA. Copy. Brakes are coming on. Brakes are on. You're go for work. Copy. Roger. One As warning. Keep the window cover installed. Uh, after one warning on the HD camera, do not touch the vent ports that are near J2, and that's a firm window cover and scoop install. In anticipation of this planned handover, our ground IV Stephanie Wilson just gave the next steps to our astronauts, Rajatari and Matthias Maher. Chari just arrived at the work site, and his next tasks are to install a window cover on the HD camera, and then he'll go on to release some cables, again, demating the old camera so that there's room on the stanchion for the new cameras. Matthias Maurer will swap bags with him, giving Raja Chari the new camera, while Chari hands Maurer a bag that contained tools for the radiator beam valve module, which is a task that he just completed earlier in the spacewalk. Originally, Matthias Maurer was planned to take Chari's bag back to the airlock and just to deliver the tools that he doesn't need anymore. However, the revised plan is for Maurer to stay put where he is and assist Chari with the camera installation.
PS truck green hook at 3651. Okay. And the window cover and scoop are attached on the current camera. Copy, open the HD camera TA clamp and release the cables on the outside. The TA clamp's open and the cables are released. You just heard our ground IV Stephanie Wilson give the go for Rajatari to release some of the cables of the HD camera. That will not mean that the current camera is free flying. He still needs to work to demate a jumper cable from the old HD camera before he can temporarily stow it out of the way to make room for the new camera. You see Matthias Maurer on screen now, inching his way using the space station's exterior handrails. He's almost meeting up with astronaut Rajachari with the new camera for a bag swap. Copy discussing. Oh, yeah. oh I see you. How's it going? Good. Yep, it's done. Roger, Matthias, from this position, are you able to do the bag swap? Yes, I would say so. Uh, we should be able to, yeah. Then we'd like you to execute the bag swap at this position. I'm going to get some racks set up to do this. I'm having your bag. Yeah, T-Fed, see on the other side, both of them say. Yeah, I'm just getting, for now, I'm just going to get a ret, see what the metal, or T. Okay, and if you, where's your, you said your BRT ret? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay, I'm going to put your, so I've got a ret to my mini workstation, to the medium camera bag. Putting your BRT ret onto the RBBM bag, my BRT ret is off of it. And jaws are open. That's coming back to you. Okay, well, I have it. I'm going to transfer this to my BRT now. Matthias Maurer successfully made his way to the camera port 8 work site where Rajachari is connected to the robotic arm. Matthias Maurer handed him the bag containing the new HD camera while Rajachari got rid of his RBVM bag that he gave to Matthias Maurer. So now that they've successfully completed the bag swap, Rajachari is working to attach his body restraint tether to the new camera so he's got it handy with him. I've got the medium RU bag with the new camera in it on my BRT, Stephanie. Copy camera bags on EV1's BRT. Yes, uh, the other one is on me. Copy the end bag is on EV2. 
The BIT. Copy EV2. I think the next thing is I'm going to have to stop my GCA to get to the MGGL. I think that as well, but I'm checking. Kayla, Raja, and Tom, we are ready for the maneuver to the NZGL position. We copy. Your uh, ground is good with the maneuver to the NGHL position. Roger, we are ready for your GCA. We understand body down. We ask for either protective clearance for your body and the camera, and we just need a distance. Okay, copy. Uh, I've got the clearance for the camera. I can't see below my blue plate, but I think that's out in open space anyways. And let's try... 30 centimeters body down. 30 centimeters body down. Starting motion. Okay, start GCS, yeah, starting motion. Okay, I see good motion body down. Good motion. 15 to go. Okay. 15 to go. Out motion. Uh, let's, go another, let's go another 10 centimeters. Another 10 centimeters. Body down. Equal. Starting motion. You start ramping out. Ramping out. I get my hands on them. Great, let's call GCA complete. Be complete. And by for brakes. Brakes are on. You go to work. Copy. Roger, D made the light jumper cable from the HD camera. That's the taller connector. D made Papa 2 from J2. Okay, working on the light jumper. The light jumper is dated. Copy. We'll take inspections. Okay, and the other one, the Papa 2, I think is the name of that one, is debated. Uh, the light jumper is good pins, no fog, good EMI band. The other one, the sockets, uh, no fog, good EMI band. Copy. And did I hear uh, the PTU cable is also demated? Yes. Okay, and the checks for that are also good? That was that second one I gave you, yep. The good sockets. Okay. Up here, on this side. But, uh, yeah. Copy. Now you can lift the cam lever 90 degrees and remove the HD camera by sliding towards the connectors. The old camera is now completely disconnected from the space station, and now Rajachari is working to remove it. Nice job. Old camera is off. Copy. You can temp stow that on the outside of the ORU bag and retrieve the WAP HD camera from the bag to install onto the SD camera. And there it is, the old camera facing the Earth from the International Space Station now disconnected and in the arms of astronaut Rajachari as he places it back into a bag to temporarily stow it out of the way so that he can focus on installing the new camera. Thank you. 
AT on the external bag going to the cutter point of the camera, so I'm taking my rep off the lips. Back. Bag. You see the brown window cover coming into view on the camera. Rajachari just installed that prior to unhooking all of the cables that connected the camera to the space station, and he's now working to put it safely away in a bag. He'll be working in reverse when installing the new camera, first removing the window cover and then mating the wireless access port and a light jumper cable. You're trying to find your line that marks the cam lever is in the locked position, but it kind of bounces around in zero G. Mark, mark, I don't think it's actually all the way on. Find the Copy, the cam lever is locked, and did you happen to see it pop out and then pop back in as you were sliding it on? It's, just, it's not on all the way. I can tell, I can see the alignment mark now. Copy. So it's still got a ways to go. It's kind of stuck. Flash on the top. Again, just, it is not flash on the top, yep. so I can see it's not fully in. Working on trying to. Does it seem like it's aligned, like it's up down? It's kind of stuck where it's at. I don't want to move up anymore. I just see this tiny little carpet. Just wiggle it and then push from the top. I'm going to back it down a little bit, see if I can... I think on my side there is on the MLI, on the box that you slide it over, there's a small forward that, that keeps it from sliding further in. This camera installation is the second major task of the spacewalk today for NASA astronaut Raj Chari and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr. The first major task of the day and the priority of today's EVA was to install hoses to the radiator beam valve module to one of the radiators on the space station. 
Rajatari aboard the robotic arm was able to mate both sides of the hoses between the radiator beam valve module and the radiator itself, open some valves so that ammonia can flow through at the command of the mission control here in the ground at a later date. And he also installed heater cables that the ground verified were installed correctly and were working properly. Now they're moving on to the camera installation. The old camera uh, worked fine, but this new one provides improved two-way high data rate communication between external payloads and our Earth. MLI, or to me, it just feels like it's not wanting to move. No, I, I don't think it's on my side, but they're actually, like, now that you wiggle it, it should be clear of that, that area. I put it out completely again, and then... I thought I made some progress there. I can't tell. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I think it's close, actually, now. It did okay. go up a little bit. Good. Felt like it moved. Like, there's so much fiction stuff that I can't tell if that cam block is moving or not. Is it... I'm Roger. We copy. We're uh, looking at the crib sheet. Uh, understand you, um, the alignment mark is hard to gauge and difficult to align. Are you able to push the cam lever to verify it's locked? It is in a locked position, but it's been in a locked position the whole time. And separately from my position, I can see that the yeah, most out of both the kind of rip with the cooling side, that is kind of um, still <clears throat> like proceeding on top of the other box. So I would say like kind of three, four centimeters. That's the expected. I'm trying to convince myself there's an alignment mark is flush on the, the right. Looks like it is in my mirror. So it definitely moved from where it was at before, but based on how much force I was having to exert, I don't, I definitely couldn't observe the cam buckle pop up and down. Copy. And Matthias, are you down. saying are you saying that the camera is not parallel from your vantage point? From my view, the camera is now installed. The end of it, so the most um, the biggest point of it, is not flush with the box that that it is installed to. There's still three centimeters of uh, of yeah height difference. Right. So yeah, there should be Copy. only line. There's a black line mark on my side. Copy. So one idea as I could GCA the other side, so the PA clamp side, then I'd be able to definitely see those alignment marks straight on. Um, you know, pull back here too. I mean, it's not, it's not moving either direction. Just trying to pull down on it. And we understand. Roger, move the cam lever to the unlocked position and try to partially remove the camera approximately a quarter inch. Push the cam lever into the lock position and then attempt to move it towards install. So unlock, move it a quarter inch, and then back down, right? Correct. There's a quarter inch. Okay, I think I just, yep, it just popped. Oh, that's sick. Okay, you have the black. So, I'm looking through a mirror. You obviously can't see this. There's a, there's a set of screws around the A clamp side of the new camera. And the, so the black alignment mark lines up with that, that's the second screw on the bottom, and that second screw is aligned with the SD camera. So I'm pretty confident that those are aligned, but if on the ground, if that uh, black line, the alignment mark on the HD camera and that second screw aren't actually parallel to each other, they, they look in the mirror, then maybe if not, but uh, best I can tell in the mirror, they are aligned. And I did see the camera pop that time. 
Copy. Down on it, not moving. We're discussing. When I had the cam lever, when I had the cam lever unlocked, open, I was able to slide it down, and now I can't slide it down. So it seems two confirming things that it, it is in. Roger, thanks for the words and the description. Uh, can you confirm that that cam lever receded back to the lock position? It did. Okay, thanks for the troubleshooting. We're calling this a good install. Nicely done. From? And I think we're taking next. this part of the scoop off and the window cover off. Yes, next is to remove the scoop in the window cover, stow it in the ORU bag. Can also stow the old camera in the ORU bag okay. and close up the bag. Okay. And our ground team here just confirmed with NASA, NASA astronaut Raja Chari that he had a good installation of the camera. Scoop the window cover off, going back in the bag. Copy. Put on the old camera. You're getting a view now of both cameras, both old and new. The uh, bag, and since we've been in darkness for a bit, can you let us know how your hands are feeling? My hands are feeling good. It's hard to know if that was the question. Yes, yes, that was the question. Hi. Thank you. That's nice to hear. And we're thanks for checking. We're about three minutes to a day pass. Chari is now putting the old disconnected camera back into the bag. This is going to go back into the airlock with them at the end of the EVA. Okay, reps are readjusted. Oops, with the old window cover, or the new window cover in the bag, and the old one's going into the bag now. Copy. Okay. One one's in the bag, it's zipped up, and I think we're ready to do engine yells on the new one. Sir? That's a firm. Mate PTU cable to the WAP HD camera. 
PTU first, which is the shorter one. We'll take good inspections, and uh, you can mate uh, P4 to J1. The PTU cable is made to J1, then the light jumper, the taller, going to J2. Build good pins, no fog, good EMI. Copy. So after Chari successfully clicked the new camera into place, now he's going to be working on bringing it online. His tasks for right now are routing the wireless access port cable, and then once all of the cables are attached, he's going to be working to make sure that those cables are nice and tucked out of the way so that the camera has room to pitch and yaw and look at whatever we're asking it to without being caught up by some wires. Short wire tie and the WAP cable to the PTU cable and light jumper. And I'm putting those super TA clamp first and then the wire tie. Here it has the wire tie and then the routing to the TA clamp, but whatever uh, forks, whatever you think will work best. I think if I try to, we try to get the TA clamp, this looks less stuff flowing around here. Copy. For some background on what you're seeing here, uh, Space Bonkers have installed multiple wireless access port capable HD cameras in various locations around the outside of the International Space Station. The last two um, occur being installed in early 2001. But this is going to be the first time that a camera has been completely taken off and replaced with a new unit rather than just installing the new unit um, at an area where they're able to connect it. That's wired to the PTU and light jumper cable. The PTU and light jumper cable are through the TA clamp. Copy. That's the way to go to the PTU cable over straight back off position. That's correct. You can work with uh, Kayla and Tom. Okay, and that is a go, I think. Is that a correct metal GCA? Proceeding to back me out of where I'm at. We copy. Roger, our brakes are coming off. Okay. We're going to start motion, the body out one meter, and we'll incorporate body up 45. Copy. Starting motion, body up. Camera installation can be a tricky job for the spacewalkers due to just the nature of the stanchions that they're mounted to. With the addition of the wireless access port capability, the crew also has to keep in mind the intricate installation of clamps and straps to make sure that the hardline ethernet connection to the back of the camera doesn't get tangled when the camera pans or tilts for whatever operation it may be supporting at the time. I 
to the body up motion. Body up. Now motion setting up for the jerk house. I'm turning over to Twitter now to take one of the Ask NASA questions that we received from Elaine, who's asking when the new camera will be operational. To answer her question, the new camera will be operational as soon as we route the Ethernet cable on the back end of the HD camera and made it to the Ethernet cable that Matthias Maurer had routed as his first task of the spacewalk. Roger, we're starting a one minute joke cast. would be to your right, 1.3 meters. Starting motion. Okay, good motion. Roger, the second of the two joke houses will be two minutes, again to your right, and you'll be facing the camera. Good. Works right. Starting motion. Motion to move. Copy, good motion.
Roger, we're setting up for the next manual maneuver. Copy. And Matthias, anything you need to talk with or Stephanie, anything before we set up the GCA? No. Just saying bye for words when you need help. Can copy. All right. Sorry for the cable. When you're ready, Tom, I'm ready for the GCA to the published PC cable or straight access position. He's in concurs. And Roger, we copy. Stand by. Yep, no worries. As soon as the sun's out of my eyes here, uh, he's not be able to tell you definitively about that alignment mark, but I'm looking right at it now. But... Copy. You can probably see it actually on the camera view. It is the top of the black line is most definitely flush with the bottom of the SD camera. Roger, we're ready for your GCA to publish. Half a meter body in. Okay. And clear. All right, let's start GCA. GCA, starting motion. I've got the clearance between my helmet and WS. Raj Achari now doing a quick evaluation of the cables that he's been plugging in to get this camera online, confirming with the ground that he installed it properly, and they confirmed that all looks good. 40 centimeters to go. Okay. Twenty to go. Five to go, slowing down. Copy. Looks good. Motion stop. Let us know if you need additional GCA. I think this is going to work just fine. Let's uh, call GCA complete. Okay, GCA complete. You're go to work. Copy. Roger. Route the uh, WAP cable through the PTU cable restraint. Raj Achari now working to route the wireless access port cable, basically doing some cable management here so that the wires are nice and tucked out of the way. Ground through the PTU cable restraint. We've now reached the five hour mark of our spacewalk with astronaut Raj Achari on screen now. You're looking from his point of view as he works to install a new high definition camera to the outside of the International Space Station. Between the units, copy, or uh, have uh, Matthias uh, tend the cable for you. I'll just have him tend it since he's there. You were just looking at the camera from his point of view. Now we're getting a wider view of Rajachari with the red stripes on his spacesuit at the end of the robotic arm doing some work. Matthias Maurer is in the spacesuit without any marks on it at the top of your screen. Does it matter? I don't know if you can see, you see my HECA view. Does the WAT cable, does it matter if it goes above or below the light jumper cable? Checking. Let's 
I don't think it would make a difference. It would only like one rich difference in routing. In the meantime, I'll have you grab onto this end if you can do it. Sure, it's fine the way it is, Stephanie, because it's, it's the fact that it's wire tied, the outside of that CA clamp routing. I think it's got to be like that, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm sorry. And Roger, we copy. We were uh, looking at the imagery and the loop. It should be more aligned with the light cable, and so you can open the uh, lock lever on the restraint and in a sense uh, flip the cable over so that the, the marshmallows reverse but, and then reinstall it into the clamp. And then the loop will be from your, in your view at the bottom. Oh, I see, got you. Okay, yep, that's my bad. Rajatari working at the ground now at the exact route that he should be taking the wireless access port cable. There's very specific instructions from the ground on exactly how they want this wire to be placed to be out of the way so that the camera has the ability to move all around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, don't take it yet, though. Okay, okay. Just out of the way. I see in the WVS that with both cables in there, it's hard to get that clamp depressed enough to pull the lock lever out. So I'm trying to find a position where I can do that. And we copy. We uh, we see that as well, right? The cables are filling up the, putting some pre some back pressure on that uh, lever. Um, our only words are to continue doing what you're doing. Push in and uh, rotate the lock lever towards the light. You're getting a live look at Mission Control in Houston now, the International Space Station's flight control room during a brief handover period to recap what Rajachari has done um, on the second task that he's working on. He's replacing an HD camera on the outside of the International Space Station. He was able to unhook the old camera and remove it from its stanchion without any problems. The old camera is now stowed on his person. He has successfully put the new camera on to the stanchion and is working to get it routed properly with the right cables and in the right positions. We like the plan. Copy, Roger. We're going to be moving you body out 55 centimeters. 
Stand by for motion. Starting motion now, body uh, out. Yeah. While I'm doing this, uh, I just want to get your confirmation that this looks like a good install for this camera since I'm not going to see this minor mark. Houston. Once we come back, the ground crew is going to take a look at Rajachari's work, make sure that all the cables are exactly where they would like it to be. And we've confirmed good installation. His next task is going to be looking for the Ethernet cable that Matthias Maurer had routed as one of his first tasks of the spacewalk. Like I said, it's the very top part of the black line is touching the back SD camera line. It's not. I'm not sure if it's touching center on the black, but it's touch, touching black, but not completely to the bottom of the black, if that makes sense. And we understand, and with all the checks uh, you performed, we're happy. Sounds good. Roger, we're setting up for one of three Joe Casas. All right, sounds good. Ready. Thanks, Grant, for catching me, putting that cable uh, running the opposite direction. Yep, your uh, intuition was correct. It didn't uh, quite match um, what we had seen before. So good talking about it also. And Stephanie, is there anything that I could do on my end here with the cable, the cable cap, and making the cables already? Or do you want to just stand by until we're fully done with Russia steps? Checking, Matthias. So we're about to start motion, body left, and you'll be turning to face port. Sounds good. Two minute joke cast, starting motion. And Rajachari is about to be in motion on the robotic arm, slightly moving to a different position so that he can work at the back of the camera.
Raj Achari now approaching the back of the camera on the end of the robotic arm. This task will bring the camera online. The new camera is operational as soon as the Ethernet cable on the back is mated with the, that of the Ethernet cable that Matthias Maurer had routed earlier. We're starting motion for the second of three Joe Casses, one and a half minutes. Station forward, and you'll be facing the camera. Sounds good. Chari's been largely responsible for the installation of this camera, Matthias Maurer having gone into the airlock to get the new camera for Chari. Um, this is, at this step, we should expect to see Matthias Maurer help out once again, connecting the Ethernet cable that he had routed. And right on cue, you see Matthias Maurer at the top of your screen, ready in position to assist Raja Chari. Matthias, thanks for offering up to uh, work with the Ethernet cable. If you feel you can do that and um, keep it uh, smooth and not twisted, um, we're ready for you to mate the uh, WAP cable J1 to the uh, Ethernet cable PAPA1. Stop and I will work on this one. Let's retrieve the cap. Roger, we're about to start the two and a half minute geocast. Body into the camera. You'll be about 75 centimeters away from the camera at the end. Copy. I see good spin. No fault. Could be an eye band. Copy. You can mate J1 to Papa 1. Okay. Copy over center. Thank you. You're getting a view now as our spacewalking astronauts install the wireless access port cable hardware to the Ethernet cable that Matthias Maurer had routed previously. But you can stay there for now so you can hand me the cable once I get there. My safety tether is right one and a half meters above your head. Above my head? Oh, I see. It's, it's below your head, but okay. it's going up to my head. Through the helmet camera, we're able to get brief glimpses of our Earth as the space station crosses over the country of Bolivia. Uh, Russia, remind me, will I be in the forward position or in the aft position? Uh, you will be opposite me. You can, you'll have time because I've got to put the clamp in and then wrap the uh, black strap to you. So it's more important that I can get the handoff on you to this
Matthias, when convenient, we'd like a glove and hap check. Um, I had to try the gloves. Look in a very good shape. I have occasional small smudges, but uh, it looks like almost like pristine. Copy all for hap and gloves for EV2. Roger, we're ready for your GCA to publish. It will be body in 75 centimeters. We'll be looking for your body clearance to the camera. Okay. And uh, do you have anything you talk about? Or are you ready for me to take the call? Uh, I'm done. You, uh, you can have the call. Okay. All right. I've got uh, body clearance to the camera. Let's start GCA. Copy. Starting GCA. Body in. Rajachari on the move once again aboard the station's robotic arm, this time getting in position to install a cable clamp. Half later to go. Continue. Thirty centimeters ago, copy looking clear. There you go. Five to go. That looks good. I may have to go body down. Motion stop and copy you on body down uh, at this time. I'm just uh, evaluating here. And okay. Stephanie, remind me of the cable clamp. I know the dog leg is going towards the TS, which it is. I don't see, as obviously, maybe I'm not in the best position, the, uh, that flat part that I'm seeing in the video. Is it the... Uh, this goes on the side closest to the TS, in terms of up down, or is the side closest to my feet? In terms of whether I have GCA or not. Uh, checking. Motion is now complete of the robotic arm as Rajachari is in place for cable ca clamp installation. Uh, just a minute ago, he gave a visual look around of the camera to give the crew on the ground a good visual of what he's working with. Uh, and uh, at the interface of the two cylinders. Okay, baby. I don't the notch. You're now watching NASA astronaut Raja Chari there in the spacesuit with the red stripe on it, uh, upside down in our view. We're looking th from the point of view of Matthias Marr. Marr is coming in with the assist and is ready to help out Raja Chari anytime he needs it. Dark colored cylinder. Uh, okay, I, I got it. it, it okay, I found it. The sun was. It. it looks flush, but it's actually at the notch. I just found it. I'm pretty sure I found it, at least. Okay. okay the locking tab is in. Let me give you a quick helmet view of it. Make sure to agree that's the right spot, but that's, uh, that's, that's the notch I was expecting to see. Okay, we concur that's the right slot, uh, spot. Um, I believe you said the uh, locking tab is in. And uh, can you verify the alignment guide is flush with the PTU and give it a pull test? Copy, flush, and good pull test. 
copy. You can retrieve the adjustable from the clamp and stow that on the bag exterior. Off the Verify no twists or loops in the WAP cable, and then you'll work with Kayla and Tom for the GCA to the strap install. It looks uh, like a straight running along the dog leg, and then I see it running off onto the piece side. And see if anything you need to uh, info on before I take to the comm again. No, I'm good. Okay, get to right here. All right, uh, Tom, I'm ready to get the GPA to publish strap and stall position. Hey, copy that. Uh, we'll be asking you to especially look at your body, and your head will be end up uh, half a meter from the truss. Okay. Going in body up 40 centimeters. Starting GCA on your call. Copy. Start GCA. Starting motion. Ready to go. Okay, let's ramp it out here. Ramping out. And I'm just evaluating here. Let's see the spot. Yeah, I think this is going to work actually where we're at without going, without getting the rest of it. Uh, check Stephanie, or am I way off? Sorry, right, let's uh, let's see. Uh, what was what was left? Just more body up, or was there any other versions left? Ten meters body up, still left. Okay, let's just uh, MGCA here. Copy MGCA. All right, so you want to hand me? Roger, you're go to work. Copy. And Roger, if you feel you can. Uh access the uh, tether point on the front to install the uh, front part of the WAP strap with the, court, with the quarter turn fastener, then that's a good position. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking at. I think if I kept going, I would have gone too high to reach it. So place the quarter turn fastener side on the electronics box tether point with the Velcro towards the stanchion base. Mating Velcro should be facing uh, outward. And the quarter turn faster should be facing me or, or closer to me or away from me? Away from you. Okay. And you'll place your uh, good call. Um, make sure there's no in this first. I go over with you for a second. I'll twist it over here. And Roger, one change uh, before you continue. The uh, Velcro should be on the Nader side. Charlie now working with the ground on how to manage the cables between the camera, the stanchion, and a strap that he's installing with wire ties and Velcro, basically keeping the cables out of the way so that the camera has free range of motion. Where's our cable twisted? Goes on the beta side, and the short turn faster is towards me. So, Roger, the cable um, needs to route around the other side of the camera, if that makes sense. So, it should come from to, towards your left okay. hand and then feed around. So, that's the confusion. Okay. 
Matthias Maurer now assisting Rajachari as he brings the wire around to the other side of the camera and handing it back to Chari. Maurer is assisting in this operation as Chari gets his wires configured exactly where they need to go. There's a very specific path that these wires need to take to stay out of the way. And that's affirmed. Okay. I just wasn't expecting it. Sorry about that. I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. Enough. I know there's no upside down in space, but it's kind of upside down. Okay, corridor trust towards me now. Makes a lot more sense. Velcro is out in Nader, and then this end is going around. Just the long wire tied to Matthias. You might be uh, untwisted here first, Matthias, before I hand it off to you. If there's twisted on your side at all. Button. Button. Give it some stuff. Okay, now you can push. That thin rust color thing you see flying into view is a wire tie. Wire ties are one of the many tools in a spacewalker's arsenal, and they're used to keep cables tidy and out of the way. Just to be clear. Like that? Yeah. It looks like, there's, okay, there's no, all right, there's no choice on my side. I see the alligator. This is on the outside of the straps. The black cable is outside the straps, so that looks good. You can hold it in today. Got it for a second? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Chari is working with a checklist now, a couple of ways to verify that what he's doing is correct. Um, he'll be placing a fastener and making sure that the Velcro is facing the stanchion. He'll be using his wire ties to route the strap around the section that he's working on and to pull it tight. He'll verify that the strap is flat and verify that there's no slack on the strap that he's installing now. We're now five hours and 30 minutes of spacewalking time. Well, tighten your side. It should go around the circle part of the bottom and then the square on the top, which looks like it is. Okay. Good words. Okay. I'm going to put the wire tie through it. It sounds like you checked that the strap is flat, and I heard a call about the French hook on the exterior. The truck is on the exterior and the black cable is outside the black strap. Run the wire tie through it now. Wire ties to the tether point and then just pushed up the profile against the Velcro. Is there a better place to put to get that excess wire, Stephanie, or are you guys happy with that? Or winding around something else if you want? And Roger, that's, uh, that's good. We like the uh, config of the strap and the wire tie. Ready? All right, so then for the rest of this cable, you need to put those through these gay clamps, or is it just run down? Take the slack out that you want, now, Matthias. Yes, yeah, we'll do it.
and the slack that's in the cable is uh, is good because we need that for the pan and tilt uh, okay. ability. Okay. We don't want to run through the CA concept. So just... Okay. In the ground, just confirmed with our spacewalkers that that's a good installation of the wireless access port capable HD camera on the outside of the International Space Station. And Roger, we need you to verify the SD camera lens hood is squared to the camera. I said that again. The SD what camera? The uh, camera lens hood is uh, squared to the camera, so that's all uh, in line and flush. And we, we can see this in the video, and we show it in a good config. Okay. All right, there's one warning, and then uh, I'll give some word to, words to Matthias, and then you can work with uh, Kayla and Tom for the next position. Uh, when powered, maintain four inches to keep out zone from the HD camera quartz apertures, and that will apply for your uh, maneuver that you'll work with them for the strap back off position. For Matthias, uh, with the work at the camera complete, we'd like you to proceed via the Nader route to panel A316. Okay, so I've been made your route. Okay. Um, I need to wait a little bit till Roger moves out, so I can actually pass it off back to him. Yes. And I'm sorry, Matthias, I didn't quite... Roger, if you're ready, we'll give you your... Roger, if you're ready, we'll start your manual maneuver. 80 centimeters, body out. All right. Yep, let's go ahead and do the body out. But please, you want to hold for a second as you're yep. bumping in. Direction to one and a half meters, body out. Okay. Ready. And Matthias, I did not copy your last. Uh, I said, like, I will wait before I move out. So Roger is out of the way. Until Roger is out of the way, otherwise... We have a small conflict in my translation part. And Rajachari is in motion on the robotic arm once again, having completed the installation of the camera. However, he's not quite done at that work site. Um, what's left is to conduct a ping test on the camera, just making sure that we're able to communicate with it and that the installation was good. Meanwhile, with Rajachari on the move, Matthias Mara will make his way to his next work site as well. Matthias, as you're translating via the Nader route and route to a panel Alpha 316, there's one caution, avoid inadvertent contact with grapple fixture shafts to prevent bending target and uh, loop, liberating dry loop. I copy this. And I understand I go media because the transfer is powered. Right? And for Matthias, friendly reminder, slow and steady wins the race. Houston, and we're standing by for the CP8 test. And we copy. Stand by. That's in work. The ping test is now underway.
We're getting a view now of Matthias Maurer moving on to his next work site. Once Mara reaches his destination, he'll be working to reconfigure some panels. What this does is set us up to replace a mini pump module next to the existing pump module in the unlikely event of failure of our existing pump module. For Matthias and Raja, we're about eight minutes to a night pass. And also, Matthias, we're a couple minutes from overflying your hometown in Germany. Copy yours. I will see if you're in the night, then. It should still be day. And we just got confirmation that the ping test is good. That was a successful installation of the new camera and replacement of the old one. This ping test verifies that mission control here on the ground can communicate with the camera and it has the ability to send it commands to move the camera about for different views. Do you have the handle for me? And now it's check again. Close to the... Uh, handle is Close to the ATA. But probably to the other side of the ATA. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see where I am. You see, yes. Then... Uh, You've gone Nader um, using the outboard ATA handrails, and then when you see a starboard tool stanchion, you'll go Zenith to handrail 3549. And now that we've verified good communications with the new camera installed, thanks to the teamwork of Rajachari and Matthias Marr, our EV-1 Rajachari is good to egress the SSRMS, our robotic arm, and start cleaning up. This involves uh, taking off the portable foot restraint and putting it back on the seat of cart and doing some cleanup tasks while Matthias Marr reconfigures those panels. To have you uh, move towards SSRMS cleanup, but there'll be several arm motions to get you to the APFR egress position. Okay, so you want me to go ahead and move to the port key handle back off those, and then get from there? Move up. And Roger, we're going to back you off and then do two Joe Casses. And that's a firm Houston okay, concur. Copy. Um, uh, you are go to the port key handles back off position and copy the successful big test. Uh, K and a specific request one ping only, so glad it worked out. We copy, stand by, for motion. And Stephanie, I'm looking at J919, so that will connect the currently attached to a dead space, and I will just uh, relocate it to the location next to it. That's correct? Under starting motion, it'll be a 1.5 minute choke gas, two meters forward and starboard. Copy. That's a firm and 20 seconds to a 20 second handover. Thank you.
and with a momentary loss of signal to the crew, we'll use this opportunity approaching the five hour and nearly 45 minute mark of the spacewalk as our spacewalkers are wrapping up their final tasks and heading for a cleanup. The primary task for the spacewalk was to replace two hoses on one of the space station's radiator beam valve modules, or RVBMs. An RVBM has two hoses, or fluid jumpers, that run out to one of the station's six radiators, which is part of the cooling system of the space station. More specifically, and more technically, this component controls ammonia flow to the station's external thermal control system to the radiator beams to get rid of heat that is collected from the station's onboard equipment. Each RBVM contains sensors that monitor pressure, temperature, and the position of the valve. In other words, there's a box on the space station that can be controlled by flight controllers in mission control, and they're able to control the ammonia flowing through the radiators to cool down the orbiting lab. These hoses were found to have been leaking several years ago, removed during a previous spacewalk in 2018, fixed back on Earth, and flown to the space station once again. When the hoses were removed, that particular radiator beam valve module had to be shut down. Fortunately, the station has six radiators with 12 total RVBMs, so losing functionality on one did not significantly impact the station's ability to get rid of excess heat. Do you bag inventory while we're doing this drill cat, Stephanie? Yes, we'll take that and also a glove and hep check. We're back now with a live view from ESA astronaut Matthias Maurer as he's working to demate some cables. Six meters and Nader, and you're going to end up facing the zenith starting mission. Hey, copy. All right, I have a dry hat. Uh, no change on the right glove, the left glove. I got a smudge on my left palm near the thumb, but otherwise. I'm The crew lock bag, on the external of the bag, I have two AET, and I have the TBA bag via an AET. I won't inventory the inside of that since we haven't opened it. And then I also have a large, small AET external on the bag. Copy checking. And Stephanie, <coughs> good. Stephanie connected J918 is connected and the cap is back on J919 on the red face. The pins were good, no fault, could be an I band and I made it, made it over center. Copy all on the report and uh, nice work on A316. for the inside of the bag, Stephanie. Stand by, Roger. Matthias, at this point, uh, with your work on panel A316 complete, we'd like you to translate back to your green hook. Uh, pick that up, head to the port CETA cart, 
uh, pick up the P4 crew lock bag that's on the CETA cart, bundle that with the RBVM crew lock bag, and head to the airlock to uh, stow the bags. Copy all. Thank you. You're welcome. And for Roger, we are ready for the inventory on the inside of the bag. Inside the bag, I've got the festival attached to a scoop and a window cover attached to the HD camera. And the HD camera is attached via one of the internal AET in the bag. No cutter point on it. Also inside, I see another adjustable that's attached to a small, small ret. And on one end of the adjustable is a scoop, brown scoop on the other end, uh, another HD camera cover. I think that is it. Copy, checking. And that is a good inventory on the inside of the bag. For completeness, I gave the pedal to clicks on the CTA card to make sure that the brakes are open. Copy, thank you. You're getting a live view of now of Raja Chari on the robotic arm. You can see him center screen with a red stripe on his legs of his spacesuit. He's holding a free flying bag that is attached to him. It contains an old camera that he unmounted from the International Space Station and replaced with a newer version. He's been aboard the robotic arm for the majority of the spacewalk, and now that his tasks are concluded out at the Camera Port 8 work site, he's going to be working to egress or get off of the, yes. of the arm and stow away his portable foot restraint that are on his feet now. Switching over to Matthias Mara's view now, you're looking at his tool bags that he was bringing out with him. He's taking a quick inventory, make sure that he's got everything he needs to put back into the airlock. Killer, just so I understand the timeline slash plan, Am I just going to this position, set up the robo moves, or is the intent to go here and see if we have time to do the port key handle? And Raja, we are setting up to take you to the egress back off position and to the FHRC um, for egress. Okay, so gotcha. we're not doing the T handles, yeah, and we're okay. almost ready for that last show cast. All right, thank you. And Jason concurs.
Matthias Maurer at the Cita cart here. You can kind of see the word Cita 1 on your screen sometimes as Matthias Maurer gets his eyes on it. If you remember from earlier in our coverage, the Cita cart is a place where spacewalkers can stow their tool bags temporarily. Uh, Matthias Maurer made several trips here throughout the spacewalk. First getting a reel of cables so that he could route the ethernet cable to eventually lead to the camera port 8 work site where the camera was installed to the ethernet cable. He also got the tools needed to work on the Bartolomeo science platform here. Okay, the reel bag, get the reel bag. Okay. We are starting motion. It'll be a three and a half minute joke cast. You'll be going forward in zenith, five and a half meters each. And you'll turn around the face of the truss. All right, sounds good. Ready. Starting motion. Tom Marshburn just, just communicated with Rajachari, indicating that he will be moving on the robotic arm to be in a position to egress or get off the arm. Matthias, we realized there was some calm going on with the uh, arm ops. Just wanted to double check that you were able to retrieve your green hook. My pepper pack nicely bonded, and uh, the seat cut picks up the uh, um, the, C4, the P4 bag, bundled this also, and I'm on my way back. Currently, I'm below the mobile transporter. Yes, we concur. And uh, when you were in route uh, after leaving panel um, A316, did you translate past P1 to pick up your green hook? Yes, I confirm. And it's the green hook is attached. My red wheel. Okay. Copy. Thank you, and that's a good config. Just floating in front of me. Okay, we're happy, and uh, thank you for the report, and we'll uh, speak with you again at the airlock. Copy. You're seeing the hands of ESA astronaut Matthias Marr as he's making his way back to the airlock. He verified with the ground here that he's got all the equipment that he needs and that his tethers are in the proper configuration to make his way back.
And Roger, we are ready for your GCA to publish for the APFR ingress of the body in two and a half meters. Okay, I've got my crew left bed clear. Uh, the GCA need to count, are you good? No, nope. and I'm on my way back. I'm almost at the seat just there. Okay. you take your time, All right? Might be waiting there for a while, I guess. There's some undoing to do here, but I'm right. uh, ready for GCA to publish APFR egress. Let's start GCA. Copy, start GCA, starting motion. Starting motion. Motion to Roger, you have clearance on your body and the APFR boot plate. I've got both of those. Half meter to go. Copy, continue. Thanks. Ready to go. Okay, still good. And to go. Motion, and we are performing additional GCA if you need. That should be good from here. So I'll uh, GCA complete. The GCA complete, stand by for brakes. Brakes are on, you're go for egress. Copy. All right, I'm getting the uh, EMORU bag stowed onto the FHRC. Please make it out of the Copy EV2. Um, can I open the hatch and insert the gear, or shall I wait for some reconstruction until Roger is back? And Matthias, uh, you can open the thermal cover. We'd like you to stow the uh, bag bundle that you have in the airlock on a large, small ret. And then it's uh, your choice. Uh, if you'd like to uh, come back out and take some more photos, you can do that and just close the thermal cover. Yep. All right, I've egressed the APFR. Just got confirmation that Raj Achari has egressed the robotic arm and is now working to remove the portable foot restraint and put it back onto the seat of cart where he got it. You're looking now at ESA astronaut Matthias Marr, who's reached the Quest airlock. He's being tasked with putting some bags away and stowing them out of the way. He'll soon be joined by Raj Achari at the airlock once the SSRMS or robotic arm has been configured and put away. And as you work to uh, remove the APFR, uh, you can check the uh, ingress aid is retracted. It'll work right now. Copy that.
this view of the v is of the inside of the Quest airlock where Matthias Maurer is stowing his equipment that was used during today's spacewalk out of the way. Once Chari installs the APFR, or we're talking about the portable foot restraint here, he's going to be working to swap his tethers over so that he can make his way over to the airlock as well. The airlock like bundle that I brought into the airlock is built, and I'm lingering below the airlock. And you sing copies as well as you. Uh Hang out below the uh, airlock, you can uh, close the thermal cover. Good work. APR, uh, APFR is removed, getting it on my left side, and I'll start taking it over towards the seat of cart. Copy, Roger. And Matthias, we have a proposal. How do you feel about doing a bit of airlock pip pin imagery? Oh, that's a good idea. Good idea. I do that. And we copy. Matthias Maurer is now opening the thermal cover so that he can take some pictures of the pip pin. Um, this is a bolt on the airlock that was showing some minor wear and tear, and installing a new one was one of the get-ahead tasks from Toma Peske and Aki Hoshide uh, back on one of their previous spacewalks. Uh, this is unrelated to today's spacewalk, but since Matthias Maurer has successfully stowed his equipment out of the way, uh, the crew asked if he'd be willing to verify that the pit pin is still good and take some photographs of it, and Matthias Maurer agreed that he has time and is able to do so. Outside of the forward, MLI. He can see the camera that he'll be using to complete this task in his hands now. And Matthias, in your helmet view, it looks like it's the one uh, to your left, uh, kind of in the top of your view. Yeah, the next one over. Oh, yep, that one. Okay, I'm at uh, let's see, I'm putting this in the Zenith starboard swing arm, which is where it came from. Is that right, Stephanie? Sure. That is correct. And with three, uh, and stow yeah. it with a clocking of six.
Stephanie, do you also want to have a hand? Pam, all of you. Yes, and I have some words for you. Ready to copy. Uh, this is in charge of the, the width, clocking of six, Papa Papa, box six. We'll put test block on block on the color. Copy, and the pitch knob is locked and can be depressed? Excellent. You can uh, perform your safety tether swap um, onto the uh, striped hook and off of the arm. Copy. It works. And Matthias, for you, for the imagery, we're uh, in particular looking for uh, an equipment hook. Do you see that? Uh, can you get eyes on that equipment hook? could even manipulate it if you want me to do it. And we have good uh, video of that. Just uh, pause here for a moment. Rajachari is now safely off of the robotic arm and is now a free-flying astronaut. He is moving his tethers from the robotic arm to the International Space Station so he can make his way back to the Quest airlock and join Matthias Maurer. Maurer is doing some imagery checks for the folks here on the ground. You are able to get any uh, close-up photos of that uh, equipment hook? That would be appreciated as well. I got photos, I'm not sure of the focal distance, um, deliver sharp photos from this short 40 centimeters, but uh, yes, I have plenty of photos. And Matthias, thank you very much. That completes the airlock pip pin imagery. You can uh, hang out and continue to take photos as you like. And we'll take the thermal cover closed as well. Whoops. And just for completeness, I'm already attached to the internal steering. My gate is closed black on black, so that at least that will be our load process. And we copy. Thank you. My red and white barber pole hook is on my left rear ring extender, gate closed, lock, lock on black. Connected to the single reel. That reel is unlocked. I'm going back to the arm to pick up that safety tether pack and the medium or U bag, and then we'll come back here and get the seal bag. Do you still copy? Houston copies.
The International Space Station is currently in an orbital nighttime as it flies over the northern territory of Australia. However, the station will be moving into an orbital, orbital daytime shortly, and when Rajachari makes his way back to the crew lock, uh, we should be able to get a good view of that in some nice daylight. This view gives us a good look at the tethers that Rajachari is working to disconnect. Uh, his feet used to be attached to the robotic arm and all tethers were on the arm so that our robotic arm operators, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, could fly him to the various work sites. Now that his feet are free and he's already installed the portable foot restraint back onto the seat of cart, you can see that he's got one last hook that he's grabbing for now to be fully back onto the station and off of the arm. My anchor hook is off, USS so must leave tether points, and Tom, you have a go to maneuver that as you leave the arm. And copy, we are going to leave the arm where it is, and we're safing at the end of step 40. Copy. Working on getting the uh, email review bag back off the FHRC. Copy. Our cop, Capcom, Alex Conalakos, just congratulated our spacewalkers, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, excuse me, the robotic arm operators, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, on good flying and good maneuvering of the robotic arm. Now that their duties are free, since Rajachari is no longer attached to the robotic arm, they're going to help move into the airlock and help our spacewalkers today, Rajachari and Matias Mar, out of their spacesuits. We're back with a view of the Quest airlock where Matthias Maurer is waiting for his spacewalking buddy, Roger Chari, as he makes his way. They're both going to get into the airlock. Uh, Matthias Maurer has already done uh, tremendous work repacking the bags that they brought out with them before Roger Chari arrives. And then repressurization will begin once the hatch is closed. The 
And we're in a brief but expected handover period as our astronauts work to make their way back to the Quest airlock. Uh, Repressurization is about is set to begin within the half hour. We'll need brake handles on both seat of carts, uh, the inboard brake pedals, uh, two times. That's the port seat of cart to pick up the real bag. Rajachari is now safely tethered to the International Space Station, away from the station's robotic arm. He's uh, grabbing the last of his belongings, including a bundle with an HD camera bag and an empty reel bag that Matthias Maurer had used earlier in the spacewalk to route some Ethernet cable. He'll stow that on his person and then make his way back to the airlock for depressure or for repressurization. Here in Mission Control, NASA astronaut Stephanie Wilson was our ground IV today, communicating with our spacewalkers. We're able to hear her voice throughout our coverage today. Uh, Alex Conaleco served as Capcom for the rest of the crew, including our robotic arm operators, Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn. Paul Kanya is the flight director overseeing the entire operation. Yeah. I can get this third corner tack down, I think it'll... Our spacewalk officer sits just behind them, uh, the entire team meeting frequently throughout today's spacewalk to discuss tasks, time, and what everyone else had time for.
10 seconds to a 20-second handover. Come down the seat of spirit. Don't hurry too much because I would like to take photos of you, okay? Break handles on the inboard port seat of carts. Copy break handles on the inboard port seat of carts. And try to trace my safety tether back here so we can try to under a bunch of stuff under the MC. Under the MT. Copy. Our spacewalkers, Roger Chari and Matthias Marr, were a part of NASA's SpaceX Crew-3 mission to the International Space Station. They arrived there on a spacecraft, which was a Crew Dragon, which they named Endurance. If in case you missed it during the course of our coverage, Commander Chell Lindgren of the Crew-4 mission, yet to fly but will be arriving to the space station soon, announced that the capsule name of their mission will be Freedom. Handles again, but you want the inboard one, so I'll get those when I get to the other side. Copy. Handles again. Copy inboard uh, brake handles. Up over the lab. And we just reached the six and a half hour mark of our spacewalk today, which was the total expected time for our spacewalk. And indeed, our spacewalkers are done with all of their tasks and are now working to ingress the airlock. You're coming. That's my tether looking clear, but straight down to you, it looks like. Yeah, very good, very, very clear. Straight down to here. I think I heard you say you already have a base tether to the airlock that you're ready to That's correct. My next viewing with uh, my left base thing is attached to the uh, viewing extender on the airlock so that our uh, load pass as per egress. Also yeah, ingress. So I want to get down there after we take care of bags. I'll get by. Place tether to your anchor hook. Am I clear to come down? Yep. And Rajachari there in the spacesuit with the red stripes on his leg 
and the rest of his spacesuit has made his way to the airlock where European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer is waiting. They're going to be working to configure their tethers so that they're no longer on the outside of the space station, but are inside of the crew lock portion of the airlock. Matthias, you can open the thermal cover. How do we want to do this so we don't uh, tangle our tethers here in the end game? To come around. Well, I mean, you pick them up anyway. Okay. And the thermal hatch cover is open. That's already my waist tether. Is that straight? Can I hand you my left waist tether to go to your anchor hook? Do you want me to? I'll get. I can get it because you're, you've got a load pad, so I can pick up your anchor hook. Yeah, I, I, I think like it might be better if you give me your back, or do you want to give it to me no. on the inside? Uh, whatever you prefer. If you, if you can give it to me now, no. then I can push it in in front of me. It might be the clearest. I'm going to get a local down so I can work on that. Okay, so it's, uh, I can start it halfway up there. I'm a VRT rep. Touch to me. Got it. Yeah. Let go of that one. The BRT right. I got it. Okay. Do you want to put uh, instead of being attached to you? Do you want that back to the airlock you ring, or are you okay with it being on you? Um, I push it in in front of me. Okay. I take a last look before I can. Take that. I got to set up my. It might be your TV set up here anyways. Matthias, we copy you have the bag bundle on a RET to you. And uh, as you ingress, you can also power off your HECA. It goes off. Is in the airlock. Perfect. And with EV2's waist tether already attached to the airlock day ring extender, Matthias, when you're ready, you can give Raja a go to release your anchor hook. That's where you have to go. Happy. Release my anchor hook. And attach it to your waist tether. Yep. Raja Chari in view there at the top of your screen, working his way into the airlock. EV2 Matthias Marr is already safely inside and is working with his crewmate to get Raja Chari back inside. Okay. Your anchor hook is off the floor. Earring and attached to my left waist tether. Both are gate closed, locked black on black. Without I have a good load path via you for station. So I'm going to pick up my anchor hook. Do it. Houston concurs. Ten seconds to a twenty second handover.
While we switch over our communications between satellites, astronaut Rajachari is making his way into the airlock, working closely with Matthias Maurer on their tether configuration, making sure that nothing gets tangled or snagged, and that they're able to both fit into the airlock correctly. Copy, we're ready for you to ingress. Okay, so now when I get uh, most of the way in, I'll rotate to get the tap the thermal cover. Okay. Copy. Once Chari is safely inside, the team will work to close the hatch thermal cover that you saw swing open to allow them inside. He'll then be working with our suit IVs, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron, no longer at the controls of the robotic arm, but inside the airlock, or, or inside the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock to get our spacewalkers um, back into repressurization and out of their spacesuits. And here they are now, Tom Marshburn with the camera and Kayla Barron looking into the airlock where she's getting the opposite view that you were just seeing of our crew ingressing the airlock. Now we try to get the thermal cover, then I'll undo my mini workstation and defector. Yeah. Thermal cover strap is attached to the D-ring, pulling it to six sharp works. Copy. Workstation end effector is off of it. I'm going to get the magnetic cover to see, which it is now. Okay, the magnetic cover is seated. All right, I'm going to come the rest of the way in now, Matthias. Yep. Got to pin down here my head. Right. And put your legs in this area. I All right, now I can, you tell me where to put them, and I'll put them there. Yeah. I caught on something with my leg. No, no, it's like I'm trying to put it in with my legs. I can't, I can't come down though, something's stuck behind my right left leg. Okay, then come in as you like and then... You see what's biting is I, I can't get my head up to be able to get to the hatch, so I have to sort out what it is. And Chari just confirmed that the hatch is closed. Remove the SCU from the stowage pouch. Then remove your DCM covers. Velcro the cover to the DCM and connect your SCU to DCM. It works. 
one as well. The view you're seeing now is of the equipment lock of the Quest airlock. Um, our spacewalkers are actually on the other side of the door that our astronaut Caleb Barron, right in the middle there, is looking through. They just configured themselves in the crew lock portion, again on the other side of that door, and have closed the hatch. And now they're working on some last minute steps. Then they'll be working with their suit IVs who you, who you see here on repressurization. SCU is on for two and locked, and EV-1 SCU on. Lock. Copy, SCU is on and locked for EV-1 and EV-2. Take your water switches to off OFF in the forward position. Expect water is off message. Water is off for EV-1, with the water off message. Off for two. Copy, we'll pause here. Uh, do not close the hatch until water EMU off is, has been so for two minutes, and we have the timer. And the timer is going. NASA astronaut Rajatari closed the hatch thermal cover, then they just turned their water off as part of their life support system. That needs to be off for two minutes before they can fully close and lock the hatch. You tell me, if, am I tipping that bungee again with my foot? Put your foot uh, against my camera, I know it's like I can close my camera. Put the camera, uh, I will need work station, and I'll, I'll bring it forward. And uh, it gives you more space. Okay. Yeah, I just need a little bit more while I close the hatch, so then I can move back this way again. Yeah. Where's that? That should be good, I think. Can't quite see it yet, but I think it's enough to rotate underneath me. You're looking through the eyes of Matthias Maurer now as he's inside the crew lock. The number 20 in the corner indicates that we'll be looking through his helmet camera. Roger and Matias, uh, two minutes, uh, the two minute timer has expired. Roger, verify the outer hatch clear of hardware. I do not see anything out there. Oh, there's no thermal cover. Clear. Verify, verify hatch position per hatch decal. And sorry, that's the handle position. Verify handle position per hatch decal. So I'm clear to close it? Uh, if you can verify the handle position is per the hatch decal, you can close and lock the hatch. I have, I have not pivoted out of the hatch deep yet. Sorry. Oh, I see what you're asking me. Yes, it is in the... Sorry. Yes, if the handle is uh, matching uh, per the decal, which I believe you just said it is, you can close and lock the hatch. I'm going to try that. All right, I'll be kicking you here. Yeah, come in, come in. Take all the space that you need. I could even hold you if that gives you stability. I can't tell what's above my head back here. 
people keep snagging me. The pressure in the crew lock now is very close to zero, matching that of the vacuum of space. At repressurization, they're going to work to get it back to about 14.7 PSI. More towards, pull me more towards your side. Thank you. Yep, that's better. Thank you. Not much better. Thanks. Hatch is down. And you said I can rotate it to latch, Stephanie? That's affirmed. Didn't work. I'm trying to get my feet up. You can let go of my feet if you're holding them. Or something. Are you running? Oh, no, 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 you can let go now. Okay, thanks. Okay, the hatch is locked in the lock position, putting the top to tab is in lock. Copy. Nice work with the hatch. Okay. And we'll transition to the We'll transition now to pre repress on the cue card. On your DCMs, check SCU connected to DCM. Check water switch and off, OFF. EB1, water's off. EB2, water's off. Check EB hatch closed and locked. EB hatch is closed and locked. On the UIA, check oxygen, EMU1, and two, two valves are open. And I confirm both oxygen valves, EMU1 and two are open. Take power, EV1, and two, two switches to on. Okay, switching to on. Check power, EV1, and two, two LEDs are on. Two LEDs are on. Power is also on. Check power EV1 in two volts between 18 and 19. It's 13.6 and 18.6. Copy on your DCMs. Take your power switches to SCU. Expect a warning tone. Power to SCU and it has to work with on. If you want an SCU, I have the warble tone. Uh, CSU said you're an SCU. Copy EB1. Again, I Houston copies both EB1 and EB2. Power switches are in SCU. Gentlemen, you literally have been flown and translated all over station today and worked with many systems. It's definitely teamwork has been the theme for the day, and we admire your tenacity. On behalf of the RBVM Jumper team, we thank you for your work today, and we'll hand you over now to Kayla and Tom. Thanks, Killer. It's uh, been a pleasure to work with you through trading, and then today on the EVA, and uh, to all the people on the Frank and EV team, EVA team, our thanks to Flight Director Paul Tanya, EBR Faker Sandy Fletcher, EVA Task Ike Terrio, and Task 2 Mitch Harder. Our EMU specialist, Malik Russell, and our airlock helper, Steve, and uh, our increment EBA uh, rep as well, Michael Dino. And then thanks to Kayla and Tom for driving us around in the arm and getting us suited up, and to Mark, who uh, continues to break records on a daily basis now. It was uh, awesome working with you guys. Thanks for uh, keeping us going, despite some things to work through, like any great EBA. So appreciate it, and look forward to seeing you on the ground, Stephanie and company.
For me, too, I would like to add a huge thanks to all our trainers who have brought us all the way to be able to, to perform today's spacewalk. And obviously, all thanks, big thanks to everyone that Vital mentioned. And we appreciate the words. Thank you. Very well done out there, guys. We're excited to get you back inside. We're going to be picking up on the crew lock repress cue card. On your DCM, take the O2 actuator to press. And work. Work. EV1 is impressed. EV2 is impressed. Copy, EV1 and 2 are both impressed. Roger, check that the EV hatch MPEV is closed. It's closed. Copy that. We're going to start repressing the crew lock. I'll be throttling the IV hatch equalization valve. Let me know if you would like a change to the rate. Yes, copy. Thank you, Kayla, in the beginning, like pretty slowly, please. All right, about a slow rate, you let me know if it's good or you'd like an increase. Thank you. Kayla Barron, just let our spacewalking astronauts know that uh, repressurization will begin soon at their comfort level. And indeed, repressurization has started, and the pressure of the crew lock is steadily increasing. Good with this rate. If you want to pick it up a little bit, up to you. But yes, I do. Feel free to pick it up a little bit. For that, bump up the rate a little bit. For EV2, check O2 actuator and press, please. Yes, I just verified it's just popped in. It's had a little fall in. But it has statues now. We show you and press now. Thank you. Thank you. Chari and Maurer reported that they are comfortable with the rate that the crew lock is pressurizing, and in fact that they could have it go a little bit faster. So Kayla Barron responded that she'll make it so. And you can pick up the rate a bit for me, right for you yourself. Yes, I'm good. All right, I increased the rate a little bit. And today's spacewalk has concluded at 2.26 p.m. Central Time, 3.26 p.m. Eastern Time, totaling six hours and 54 minutes. As a fun fact, this is the exact time of the spacewalk that occurred just eight days ago to the minute. One PSI on the gauge. Step at four PSI, you'll expect an alert tone. When we get to five PSI, I'll be stopping the depress for a two minute leak check. Okay.
The spacewalk just eight days ago was Rajachari's first spacewalk of his career, clocking in at six hours and 54 minutes. Uh, today was his the second spacewalk of his career, so he has essentially doubled his spacewalking time. Good. Keep on going. Uh, it's up to the TSU, you can pace it. If, it, if you walk faster, you can sort them. Yep, I think it's good, right? I think it's kind of a bit faster. Just confirming you said a little bit faster? Yes, I confirm. The crew lock just approached 2 PSI. When the pressure approach is 5 PSI, the crew can expect a momentary hold. You have enough room, Matthias? I can put me wherever you want at this point. Very good. If you need more room, just put oh, me around. I have all the room I need. Same like you, right now. I also have only come on the right. Oh, no, really? Yes. It, it, it ha just, just happened now? Uh, it happened when you, while you were entering, when you picked up the keeper card, the reaper card. Oh. To see if they're wet on the inside when we get out. Yeah. This is a good rate, Kayla. Happy, good rate. Yeah, good rate on me. Thank you, Kayla. Sorry. And Houston Coffee's uh, loss of calm in the right ear for EV2. That's correct. I have come only in the right ear, Stephanie. Not in the left. I'm trying to clear my ears to see if that, um, that has an effect. But so far, I only hear you on the right side, and I successfully can clear my ears several times now. Copy, you have a good ability to clear, and you have calm in the right ear. I have calm in the right ear, but not in the left. Copy. All right, we're at five pounds. We're going to wait uh, two minutes for the crew lock pressure to stabilize, and then we're going to do a one-minute leak check. Sounds good. Copy. Our spacewalk today began at 7.32 a.m. Central, 8.32 a.m. Eastern Time, when astronauts Raj Atari and Matthias Marr switched their spacesuits to internal battery power. They ran into a flub right out of the gate with a light and helmet camera not staying put, but the team here on the ground came up with a fix, and the spacewalkers were on their way. Raj Achari went on to replace two hoses on the radiator beam valve module. It had previously been leaking, but the space station's other radiators were able to do their job and keep the space station cool. Chari's work replacing these hoses improved the performance of the station's radiators and gave us more wiggle room in case any of the hoses were to become faulty in the future. The team also replaced an old camera with a high-definition camera and brought it online. Matias Mara was able to make his way to the Columbus module and Bartolomeo science platform to set our robotics officers here on the ground up for success for future installation of science experiments. Starting the one minute lead check. Copy. All good. 
So at 2.26 p.m. Central for a total spacewalk time of six hours and 54 minutes, the 248th spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades has concluded. This is the third spacewalk of 2022 and the fourth spacewalk of Expedition 66. This was the second spacewalk of Chari's career, his first occurring just eight days ago, so his total spacewalking time brings us to 13 hours and 48 minutes. This was Matthias Maurer's first ever spacewalk, so the total time of our spacewalk today is the total spacewalk time of his career, six hours and 54 minutes. Among the total spacewalking time of those 248 spacewalks, our spacewalkers have spent 65 days, 8 hours, and 25 minutes suited up and outside of the International Space Station in support of maintenance and upgrades. Good leak check. We are going to be um, continuing now on the cue card by checking that your glove heaters are off, OFF. Yeah, I confirm mine are off. Off for me, EV1. Copy that. Check your gloves for contamination and report any to us into Houston. EV1, I don't see anything in my gloves. No contamination for EV2. Copy that. No signs of contamination. A reminder that cuff one symptoms that resol resolve upon repress should be reported as cuff two to ensure your proper DCS treatment. And if you have any DCS symptoms, leave the O2 actuator in press to maintain a higher suit pressure. Take your O2 actuator to IV. Our spacewalkers today are just on the other side of that hatch that you see in the center of your screen. The pressure inside is slowly increasing. It went from zero and has paused at about five, but with a good leak check and good suit check, the pressure is resuming to go up. To continue with the repress by taking the IV hatch equalization valve to norm, let me know if the rate's okay. Good for EV2. It's fine for you, for me. You said it's okay for you, with this? Yes, this is okay for me. Happy, good rate. Good rate. When the crew off, differential pressure is about zero, expect an alert tone. Happy, go okay. When repressurization started, both spacewalkers issued a huge thanks to everyone on the ground and a huge thank you to their crewmates, Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn, for driving Chari all around on the station's robotic arm. They also sent their congratulations to their crew member, Mark Vandehei, who they said just continues to break records. The pressure of the crew lock just surpassed 11 PSI. Once pressure is equalized across the hatch, we're going to be opening the hatch and bringing you in to dock safers and put you on the EOS. That's good. That's like a wonderful plan. And we're still hot, Mike? Firm. A firm ground will inform you when you are no longer hot, Mike. That's good. Copy. Okay. 
just momentarily our suit IVs, Tom Marshburn here at the front of the screen and Kayla Barron will work to open the hatch and bring our spacewalkers into the equipment lock. And there's the record breaker himself, Mark Vandehei, coming into the equipment lock as well to greet our spacewalkers after a job well done. tone for the 14.2. Uh, Hi there. The single beep. Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah. The hatch is open, brother. Oh, gotcha. Houston Station on one. Uh, we're waiting for your work in step four in 1.240 and four and five. Station Houston, we'll take care of step four. We'll let you know on five. You can continue in step seven. Copy, continuing on to step seven. Hey, Am I still hot, Mike? Yeah, we're still hot, Mike. The water coming in. Matthias Marr was the first one out of the crew lock and is now in the equipment lock as our suit IVs, Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn, with the help of astronaut Mark Vandehei, gets his safer units off. Houston Station on one, wanted to report that Matthias has some water in his helmet. It's a little bit difficult to judge the volume because it's spread across the front of the visor, but I think we should accelerate the steps to get him out of the suit here. We copy Kayla. Um, we can focus all of attention on Matthias. So uh, remove. Has the safer been removed? You can get him on the EDA and start get, doffing his suit first.
He just got a brief glance at the huge smile across Matias Mara's face after a job well done on his spacewalk. Four decimal one one five in the EVA systems book. The crew is now working to first get his safer unit off, which they completed, and then they're going to take his helmet off. Read those steps to you if you desire. Now lock on to Alex, we copy, and we got step two at 4.115. Copy, Mark. We're following along. And Mark, for your essay, the crew is no longer hot mic to the ground. Although our ground IVs are expediting the removal of Matias Mars' suit, space suit because they noticed an excess of water in his helmet, uh, the ground, the crew here on the ground reports that Matias Mar is in good health and is in no danger with the excess water, but they are interested in collecting that water just to see how much ended up there. Station Houston uh, on one, we see the helmet is off. If you can help us estimate the quantity of loose water inside the helmet and report the, uh, whether the hat is wet or dry. Cap is a little bit moist, but I think it would have been difficult to detect through a calm cap. Um, right. Let us talk about how much water we think it is. Kayla Barron removed the helmet of ESA astronaut Matthias Marr, and now they're evaluating the HAP, or the helmet absorption pad. Barron reported that it was a little bit damp. Maybe a 8 to 10 inch diameter circle thin film of water on the helmet. Mark's going to take a picture, and there is water at his um, vent port at the back of his neck ring.
Copy uh, airlock on that. Uh, can we get some more clarification on the water that is at the vent port, uh, the, the size of the droplets? Copy the photos. Also, we'd like you to remove the hat and take photos of the hat, uh, especially if you can get a thickness uh, from a side view. You're looking over the shoulder of Tom Marshburn as he removes that helmet absorption pad for some quantitative analysis. Alice, this is a, maybe a, another way to describe the amount of water on the helmet. Tom said there's about 30 to 50, three zero to five zero percent of the visors coated with with a layer of water. Copy, 30 to 50 percent coated with water. And uh, for the HAP, if you could go ahead and Ziploc bag that HAP and stow that in the EMU equipment bag. Okay, that's in work and we got the photos. Um, Matias is fine and we're planning to uh, return to the nominal procedure to get Raja out of the crew lock, if that's okay with you guys. We concur with that plan, and we have a couple of other requests when you get to uh, glove photos. Kayla Barron removed the helmet of ESA astronaut Matthias Marr and took documentation, took some photos and some visual reports of the inside of the water in his helmet. Baron is removing the gloves now while Tom Marshburn is stowing away the helmet absorption pad so that the crew can look at it at a later time. We're in a brief handover period. However, the ground team here uh, working the spacewalk is thinking up ways that they can get more data from the crew, whether that's looking at Matthias Mars' head or parts of his spacesuit, so that they can determine just how much water was found. In the meantime, Kayla Barron is going to be working to get our astronaut Rajatari out of the crew lock and into the equipment lock. We're back now with live views of the equipment lock, and Rajachari just had his safer re unit removed from his spacesuit.
both of our spacewalking astronauts are now back in the crew lock in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock. Uh, when Matthias Marr entered the crew lock, it was entered the equipment lock, it was noted that Marr had water in his helmet. At no time was he in any danger, but Marr and Marr did not know any discomfort during the EVA itself. The crew is going to continue to take documentation of the water for analysis by the ground team. Airlock Houston on one. I have uh, deltas for you starting in step 37. Let me know when you're ready. We don't need to voice them until you get there. Copy them. The helmet absorption pad that went inside of Matthias Mars' helmet has been stowed away for further analysis. The ground crew will look at that, as well as other data that the crew provides, including they were looking at the wetness of his head and possibly the levels of his onboard consumables, like the water he was drinking. All of this plus more will be used to help the ground crews here determine the cause and how much water ultimately ended up in his helmet. But Matthias is now safe in the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock with his helmet off. The ground here was made aware of this water only after Matthias Maurer was in the equipment lock. He did not note feeling any water in his helmet during the spacewalk himself. An airlock on one for Raja, there was no water in his helmet. Copy. Raja Chari's helmet has been removed and the crew did note that there was not any water inside. Now they're gonna work to remove his gloves. Okay, in step 37, uh, we would like to have uh, Matthias's ComCap earphone inspected, earphones inspected, to see if there's moisture in the earphones for the loss of Com. Also, we'd like to um, see if the com the ComCap absorbed any moisture uh, from the helmet, if like the top of the ComCap is is wet or damp. Yes, Alex, in both of EV2's ear cups, there are several, I would say, you know, maybe 20 large droplets of water in each one, and we'll take some photos. The com cap itself doesn't really, maybe just very slightly damp, but I wouldn't call it wet um, by any means. Copy that. I have uh, deltas in step 46, 47, and 60. 
Well, I can read them now or we can wait till we get there. Kayla Barron now working to document other parts of Matthias Mars' spacesuit, what he was wearing today, including an earpiece. Uh, she did note some water, but she is giving a complete analysis to the ground. Copy. Matthias Marr is now out of the hard upper torso of his spacesuit. Alex, we're ready for the Delta to step 46. All right, thanks, Mark. Uh, so if you could please take photos of Raja's right boot, the top of his boot, uh, that would be uh, appreciated. We think it may have contacted the, the Lee at, at some point. And then in step 47, 
Could you please have Matias inspect the electro leads of his sternal harness? Um, we had uh, an intermittent biomed connection at the end of the EVA, and so if he could inspect the sternal harness uh, when he doffs that, we'd appreciate it. Okay, Capital, right uh, foot for Raja and sternal harness for Matias. Good words. Astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn, our suit IVs, are continuing on to help our spacewalkers out of their spacesuits today. However, they're going to continue to monitor the situation with the water in the spacesuit, uh, taking pictures and taking notes of anything else that they may see. Go ahead. Yeah, Mark, we're being uh, told we actually lost uh, Raja's biomed also at the end of the EVA, so if we could have him inspect the uh, electro leads on that as well, we appreciate it. And thank you for taking all around uh, photos of the uh, boot there. And Houston from there, like uh, Matias's uh, three um, connectors on his sternal harness are very well connected with Moleskine, Moleskine and uh, and the tape that is holding it down to the skin. They're all completely intact. Copy, Tom. Great inspection. Houston is saying it's true for uh, Raja. His uh, all three electrodes are still well adhered to his skin and well taped. Copy all. And airlock, our next delta is in step 60, 60. In the six-hour, 54-minute spacewalk today, astronauts Raja Chari and Matias Marr were able to route an Ethernet cable, install two ammonia hoses between the radiator beam valve module and one of the station's radiators. They also set up the Bartolomeo science platform so it can receive scientific experiments, secured some loose insulation, and swapped a camera on the exterior of the space station. Upon entering the space station again after the EVA, water was found in the helmet of European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Marr. He did not know any water or discomfort during the spacewalk itself, but our team here on the ground is going to continue to look at components of his spacesuit and work with the astronauts in orbit for further investigation. He is now safely outside of his spacesuit and continuing on with his day. This concludes the third spacewalk of 2022. This is Mission Control Houston. Thanks for joining us.